Welcome to Pratidwani, where we try to humanize science. I'm your host, G. V. Pawan Kumar. It is my pleasure and delight to have in my uh, small studio, <laughs> my own office, uh, Professor Sandhya Kaushika. Sandhya is a uh, neuroscientist and a very excellent, uh, you know, mentor, teacher, and also a person who does science with great kind of, you know, uh, attitude, and also has done a lot of interesting work. Uh, she is at uh, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, uh, Mumbai, and I am delighted to welcome Sandhya. Thank you, thank you, Sandhya. Um, you have been uh, a researcher, a mentor, and uh, also a scientist for a very long time now. Uh, how did you get interested in science? What motivated you to really become a scientist? Please tell us right from your childhood. Uh, how how did it uh, started? I think for me it was very natural actually. I I probably did not know that that was a scientific bent of mind, but some of my earliest memories were, you know, seeing some reading something in the first standard textbook in the science thing, and then coming home and wanting to try it out. My first thing that I did, and still my mother still sometimes remembers it. They said the melting point of uh, water is you know this is this temperature so i took an ice cube from the fridge did not ask her put it in a button put it on uh, the gas okay. <laughs> and then turned on the gas and stuck the mercury thermometer which you put in your mouth to measure temperature and to oh because i was trying to read it and then my mother comes after some time i've boiled up the water burnt the button and mercury in the thing and she said what have we done wow. <laughs> but this this is what who i yeah. was and i think i i i was lucky enough to go in up and grow up in a place where we had a garden and so i would just you know follow things watch things look at birds look at ants I don't know. It was just natural. natural, and and I didn't know that there was a profession like a scientist or something when I was under ten. Of course, that's not something that occurs to you. Where, where were you born? Sorry. I was born in uh, Tirunelveli in oh. in Tamil Nadu, and I spent some years in a small uh, sit, small town called Metur Dam, where my hmm. father had a job, and hmm. then he moved to Baroda. Hmm. and he was working there in a company and so i grew up essentially till i left to do my phd i was in baroda okay did okay. all my schooling there and uh, i think i was around 10 or 12, 12 i think i was 12 when i was reading in newspapers and there was this magazine called science today that my yes. parents would occasionally get yeah, yeah. and i started reading things over there and i realized there was a field called genetics and there were some kids in my neighborhood both of the kids had severe disabilities they mm. had uh, intellectual disabilities and then when you read these articles in the newspaper about genetics and down syndrome it seemed like there was a way in which you could understand these things and explain them and maybe even in the end think of a way to bring societal benefit and that's when I sort of zero clue decided hmm. nah, scientist banna and I will study this thing which they're calling is genetics. Oh, wow. <laughs> right at the school level, you were, you were very... I was very young. I was very young and I think I'm one of those lucky few whose wellspring of passion has never waned. Fantastic. And through all hmm. the vagaries that hmm. come with a scientific career, I think I've been very fortunate and I recognize when I see young people or my own children, when they I see them and I, I realize what a wonderful thing it was for me to have this some way to center myself. I mean, I didn't never I never had to question what I wanted to be or what I wanted to do with my life. It's just been truly I'm fortunate and so lucky. So after that, I was very lucky, you know. My mother never minded the burnt buttons and mm. <laughs> the stuff that you do so i think i think in 11th or 12th standard you know in cbsc you could do some extra experiments or you could do a project so for all subjects i did a project nice. you know for <laughs> physics chemistry mm. and biology i did a uh, chemistry no physics i remember biology yeah chemistry also i did a project so my chemistry project was making soaps 
so i you you get everything and then i made every soap at home ruined i don't know how many more bartans i would change the oil samma so, get me some coconut oil get me this oil that oil then i would say is it different i have so many horrible soaps you know i don't think anybody should have used them but i did okay let me try doing something called foaming capacity there was no internet then right so this was just me being curious about things around myself figuring out things to play with my physics project was some let's measure young's modulus because i had read something in the textbook that you can do young's modulus so that might decide when a string breaks so let me go and get all of these things aata to kuch nahi hai then devise a figure out a way how it breaks and the physics teacher is looking at you you're coming to this lab and doing this and you're just like in looking at you with oh my god what is this kid doing no this is wonderful uh I want to actually uh, kind of touch upon one specific point you mentioned that you were also deeply influenced by uh, some people who had disabilities who yes. uh, could you please tell a little bit about uh, what was that influence and uh, probably they were your friends they they were in our they lived in the same same, same, same housing yeah. area that we did it and they worked in the same company that my father worked in because it was a housing area associated with the company the township as they call it and they were also tamil people mm. and you know they would cry so much because they had two children both of them they could not be independent right they were they could i don't think they could read and write mm. i mean and they had difficulty in moving um it was if i remember correct a cousin marriage Mm. and you know you saw the practical difficulties of a family which had special needs kids you saw how helpless was medicine in providing even a diagnosis mm. right mm. they didn't even know what was going wrong mm. they didn't even have a name for it and this was uh, time well, time roughly a year uh, roughly so say early 80s early 80s yeah yeah that that was probably the time where there were hardly uh, hardly yeah, any there was hardly any there was yeah. no question of genetic testing and all uh, of that right mm-hmm. down syndrome was a huge thing that yes. people knew that there was this chromosome abnormality i don't even know if it was possible to test uh. in india right so there was and it it sort of brought home to me both the what i call the scientific aspect that how little you understood about this sort of thing i couldn't have articulated it but you could clearly see that you didn't understand, understand. it yeah. was not something that you got a, you know you got some uh, disease and they gave you medicine the most common thing you would get is uh, you know like mmr wasn't a vaccine when i was growing up so you would people would get measles, measles and mumps, yeah, mumps and things yeah. like that and you know you sort of recovered from it they gave you some medicine and if you got uh, they give you antibiotics uh, if uh, something cut you they give you sulfa ointment this had nothing mm, they could do mm. nothing they couldn't give you a name for it they couldn't help and only thing that society could do was to support the parents and tell them it may not be so bad make a plan for it you know save money but they worried about what would happen when they passed away and they had these children who were obviously physically healthy enough but were not people who could do anything with their lives in fact that was something so in my biology project i don't know if i have it still i should go back and look mm-hmm. i had written you know sort of surveyed whatever genetic disorders i could by looking at various books and i sort of wrote that up for my biology cbse project but the last page i wrote i i look back and it was very naive but i wrote an impassioned um statement saying that such people who have such difficulties you have to find a way to make them productive members of society mm. and there might be things that they could do and maybe you didn't have to worry about things like they're going to cheat you or lie to you or be dishonest because they may not even know what that meant what that meant right i i don't even know if that's true or not but you know it sort of felt right then very early and you know when i was in school also i used to raise money for help age india and things like that and my parents always were sort of inclined to support people and 
institutions where they needed help. So we always, before Diwali, there was a particular orphanage mm. that Amma would always say that, you know, we need not have the nicest clothes, but we should support mm. these children. So that was just the way it was. And it felt that it was very important that we as a society think about that. Compared to those times in the 80s to now, I think there's a lot more sensitivity about these sorts of issues. And I'm really excited to see that this government is committing to rare diseases in interesting ways. And there's a network being set up in India, which I hope will help Indian parents. And mm. there was this, um, you know, there was this judgment where saying that families which come from these places should get more financial support, uh, who have children of these kind of you know mm. rare disorders get much more financial support it's still i think incredibly mm. difficult, difficult yes. but i think it's now recognized in society much better than it was in the past and i have people in my family who have children who are special needs mm. and i'm happy to say that those people are not crying mm. the yeah. way those parents are and they sort of feel they can go through this journey. journey. There is a community. There's something which have, is there. So I, I think it's sort of, you know, I think those are seeds. And when you're very young, you can't maybe articulate the emotions and the reasoning very well behind it. But those were certainly seeds that seeds were there. Seeds. Wonderful. You know, this also kind of brings me to slightly broader meta question uh, where this aspect of empathy and compassion somehow is kind of deeply intertwined with uh, biology research too. I'm not telling everybody has that viewpoint, but many a times, I have a, this is a general observation, of course, this is not a statistical uh, kind of observation, is that uh, a, a lot of motivation for biologists comes from uh, the fact that early in your childhood, you get exposed to a part of uh, a problem within the society where science can be a solution. And in this particular case, biology is, is, is one of the main solutions, I, which further motivates them to really look into it. I think, you know, I would have done some kind of science regardless. There mm. was just no question of it. I think the choice of which science was a combination of what I understood best, which is often biology, is easier to understand. I always say it's written in English, mm. not in its own language, <laughs> which is... Uh, physics and and so you don't need a margdarshi very early on <laughs> you can just sort of learn it on your own but i think the fact that you saw these problems as more obvious around you so i said yeah this is interesting and worth doing but if you had asked me at that time i would have said i want to do genetics and they said oh you have to do genetics of ants i would have happily run after mm. ants also you know mm. so i would not say that that was the moving driving passion but you realize that there could be impact, impact on what you did and it's really impossible to get away from i think uh, when i was a postdoc i i'm just a very curious person mm. and and there was a course running, which was for graduate students, but I went and took it, which is a wonderful course. I would love to be able to do one like that, where I am now, mm. which was 50% of it was research, but 50% was patients. It was called Neurobiology of Disease. So we would, in each class, it had, it, we meet once a week. It would start at six or seven. We always had pizza. The first aspect was somebody presenting a paper, which would be some sort of research paper. The second aspect was either speaking to a doctor, a patient, or a caregiver about what they saw as their symptoms. And then you have this discussion at the end of the class as to how far you have gone in your research to either explain the symptoms or to, you know, or to have some sort of therapy, even if you can't explain the symptoms, can you have something that works, what works, what mm -hmm. doesn't. One of the course instructors herself had CP and she was a doctor, cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. and she was a doctor. So she would say, you know, if my leg behaves in this way, then, you know, today I'm going to treat myself a little bit better with this sort, give myself this, you know. And it was, it was, I often say that that rescued me from the lack of diversity that you often mm -hmm. have in your postdoctoral fellowship, which is just more and more mm. research. And I was especially in a medical school, which is very different from being in an undergrad campus. 
And since that time, when I published my first paper, there were people who would email me, who parents, you know, they, so the first email I got, it was as a postdoc saying that you've, writ you've written something, you've written a paper on something on axonal transport and, and you say that this can be important in neurodegenerative disease. I saw your introduction and you said something about human mutations. My father has this difficulty. He has uh, Alzheimer's disease. Does your work have any relevance? And it sort of wakes you up. And mm. since that time, even now, if I open my DMs in Twitter, there mm. will be people who write such things, mm. people who email you, people who call you up, your parents who will call you up. And, you know, it's very hard not to, un to see that there is that link and how people are searching for those answers. And I think that, I think as a biologist, you recognize it. You know you can't make an impact. What you're doing, it is in some corner. Mm. But for someone who's primarily interested in figuring out fundamental, you know, how fundamental things work in a cell, it's also important to have, have this wake-up call every once in a while, this interaction with the world once in a while, which forces you to look outside the ivory tower and keep asking yourself, even if you are not doing that work, is there somebody who's doing something which could help in this situation? How far have we gone? Should we be reconsidering hypotheses? I mean, I can tell you that people had mouse models for SOD and, you know, um, SOD mutation for ALS and mm. for Alzheimer's. How many years they've tried to develop drugs and then so many of them fail when it comes to human trials. So you're able to cure or improve mouse, but you're not able to improve humans. So does that mean your original way of how you were thinking these diseases work has failed? Is that your fundamental understanding is flawed? And I think you can't divorce the two. Sometimes you're lucky enough to find something which works. And, you know, lithium was one of those. It was not well thought out. Uh, the SSRIs are something which are maybe by design. The brain, in some ways, for public health, is one last great frontier. Okay. For everything else, there's ways to manage it. Here, there aren't ways to manage it which you are trying to fix the biology. Mm -hmm. Your ways to manage, manage it, especially when you're thinking about things like neurodegenerative disease, not even as much mental health problems. You're very pernicious, but there are at least some few medicines you can try. Here, with, we really don't have anything at all. So I think it sort of is a good wake-up call right. to keep you centered on that while you go and what it is is play. But what it has given me, I would say, this whole thing, and as I have had my own lab, is an absolute determination to be as careful as possible about what I conclude and try to even whatever tiny piece we are understanding to understand it as well as we can yeah. given the tools we have and we have in the lab so this is where i think sometimes you know the vision of the pi and the vision of the trainee may not align but it's very hard for me given my experiences to separate that uh, yeah completely wonderful but, wonderful this actually is an important uh, kind of also segue to how you can connect what you do in the laboratory to a slightly bigger picture. Uh, the motivations to ask questions can actually be very interesting. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, we'll come to that point where you all, uh, also mentioned about your postdoctoral training and very interesting course where yeah, you have two, two aspects. Uh, if you look at all these things, um, again, coming back to the point of that empathy and compassion, uh, you know, it's so important. Sometimes we don't pay attention to that, right? Because uh, in the in in the whole noise of uh, you know a, a scientist, a noise of becoming a scientist, somehow we 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 lose this part of it. And somehow I also feel that uh, people who work in medical sciences, biological sciences, which is closer to let's say medicine. Uh, all, or even people who work in ecology, evolution and other things are, are deeply, you know, connected to something which is there in front of you in terms of their thing. Um, how much of this training is, is, is part of your education per se? Is it a developed kind of a thought process? Of course, there is an influence of, of your uh, kind of immediate uh, environment. But how much is it a, a thought process? Uh, 
uh, in schools colleges uh, because i we are since we are in the part of the chronology where we are talking about your school education i think you know values i mean what you are actually are talking about is a hmm. values based education and i think there are some formal values that they would talk about because i went to a convent school till i was about 9 or 10 it seemed very silly in some mm. cases when you were young um but for me personally those values came from my family my mother's father was a doctor mm. and it was very well known we used to talk about it in the family all the time that he was he was in tena really mm. Mm. and he used to do enormous amount of free treatments And this is common and i adults, think you can do people. that right mm-hmm. so the person who do free treatments or this guy would suddenly come and everybody in the family would say party would tell me veedu pura vaala pala irukku he will come and say i had a crop of bananas they'll see that there are three people or two people in the house how many bananas they can eat no 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 he is feeling so happy that his eyesight has been fixed or he some gender messed thing has been he will give a huge amount of bananas he <laughs> gave a huge amount of kirai <laughs> you know so my grandmother was to sort through this so it was i think it was well known and sometimes um, most recently my grandmother just passed away mm. she was 102 my, wow my okay. i know i know but my grandfather mm. was the doctor passed away when he was 60 mm. and uh, my uncle said whatever good happens in our family is because of all that wonderful stuff Stuck. he did for <laughs> people so i think it came from the family mm. my father was an i'm not even 100 as good as he is he's a very empathetic human being mm. Mm. and he's someone who has great kindness um and you know there were people in the evening every day in the evening people would be in our house and they would wait for him to come back from office to speak to him mm. and you was know was he also a medical doctor no no, no, no he no. was an engineer. engineer so um he you know people just reached out to him mm. and mm. he was he, he could encourage them no 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 you know you've just got a diploma go and do this kind of training it's better for your career you must up skill yourself and even now i see you know he he's very tolerant mm-hmm. of people's phobia so it was a very good training ground where you just picked up things that was not you know i i as i said i'm not as good as my father i think in in this regard and i really look up to him and so different people influence you in different ways and and Uh, how, my, how, my mother-in-law is also like that she's okay, a nice. very kind human being and she lives with me hmm. and and so you sort of get to see people and get to see them for what they contribute hmm. to the world at large and i think you just learn it but i do think there is a place in our education system to talk about reaching out out of outside of yourself hmm. to make a contribution to build community to really make you know a tiny difference and i think that's something which people forget in fact few times i've been asked to give talks about you know mentoring kind mm. of talks and one of the things i always say right around you are people and you can make it an uplifting place to be you know in a lab itself it's very difficult because it's a lab it is a range where you disagree and you agree and there's the tension of getting science done and all of those things but in the community it need not be like that and you know so i have been involved in i mean put my money where my mouth is i sort of did four renovations of the ncbs crash train mm. the faculty uh, staff over there they still text me we still meet and there was some 25 year celebration and they were waiting for me to come online to speak and so i'm friends with them and um, so that was that then the young investigator meetings which was started from a dinner that i organized with ron vale and then he suggested that we should have such a mentoring mm-hmm. kind of meeting where people get together i said i'll help organize it mm-hmm. i did the first and the second deepak with deepak mm-hmm. the second one was deepak barua barua yes was unanticipated do the sex enormous amounts of time from that has grown india by science 
you know, and then I sort of did the first Indian Sea Elegance meeting. We are now doing the mm. first Asia Pacific Worm meeting. So I just believe that there's a room for building community outside of your immediate environment. And I wish more young people saw that because I think the advantage of that is you can shape it. You know, you may not get accolades because of it, but that's not what you're doing it for. You're doing it for making it, making it the larger community, community work well. The internal, in, you know, in the immediate every day, there will still be tension. There will still be friction. It's I often, you know, running labs or doing research. It's a lot like having a family. Every day is not smooth. Every day has its local fluctuations. But when you step out and look at a period of five years, you see you see the overall good, good stuff, stuff that has happened, right? But for that to, to be able to have that, you need this, you need this larger group which a larger way of seeing things from a different perspective and working to make things better both. So if you have, for instance, if you have a community of other, what my thought was when the young investigator, your immediate environment can have fluctuations and difficulties. But if you have a peer in another institution who you can collaborate with, you can speak to as a different perspective, has found a solution to their purchase problems, mm. for instance, is pernicious issue. You, you have, have a buddy it. whom you can yeah, share absolutely. with and sort of, re, you know, gives you a different perspective on what needs to be done. I think, I, I wish this way is something that younger people were encouraged through schools to engage in. And I think then the values of, you know, we must try to do right by people as much as we can. Yes, there is diversity. Yes, those diversities differences are difficult to manage at times but let's work in that direction I think would make for a better society where people I, I would like to say are happier but I think it's very hard to do hard to, as well No, this is a very important point what you're mentioning although I, I would have anyway come to this part but since you mentioned this see this influence of your local environment uh, one of course the immediate laboratory environment where you're uh, kind of you know supervising and also you're mentoring people it, it has its own uh, different context and you can also influence them very positively second is uh, if you have let's say a community of people around you who are working and you very rightly mentioned that you can really help them in a very in, in many different ways this also means that uh, it's a great model for a society if you look at it very closely uh, because uh, this the situation is not very different. For example, you very nicely made an analogy with the family. Uh, that's actually very, very appropriate in my opinion too because a, a laboratory or a group in which you are working is some kind of a family which is very close, with like your immediate family because you are really uh, you know interacting on a day-to-day -day basis, literally living your scientific world or rather your, your intellectual world and things like that. But there is also a, a sphere of influence you have uh, within within your community. Uh, was this also part of your upbringing where you were growing up uh, uh, in, in Baroda and with the school where you went? Uh, was this also a kind of a purposeful thing which you learned? Or uh, is that what you really thought going forward or it happened to you as you progressed in your career? What, what was that origin of thought? I think... Not my school, certainly, mm -hmm. uh, but at my home. Oh, oh yeah. it was mm -hmm. just there. You know, mm -hmm. people would just come home. Yes, I mean, yes. <laughs> I used to sometimes laugh. Diwali day, we would have to get everything ready, and you know, weeks, you know, like not weeks before, but several days before, Amma and I, I would mm -hmm. be helping her. We would make dabba dabba barke, uh. you know, <laughs> three salty different things in different shapes, three <laughs> sweet <laughs> things. And then people would start coming at 6.30 to the house. <laughs> and my childhood was very different from the rather solitary life that we lead now. Mm -hmm. But people would be always yes, coming, coming. And, and, uh, and we would be sharing. Uh, they would be willing to meet. They wanted to speak to them. Uh, many of the families which were around would come and seek advice from my mom and dad about various things from you know, should we get our daughter married in this? Should we spend mm -hmm. the money to send them to a paid college? Any number of things. And you just saw that. So you realized that you could have that influence. My own personal life is much more solitary, mm -hmm. uh, partly because my husband is, is, 
it's different even though he grew up in such a busy thing busy way but his personality and i am happy either sure, sure. so um and i think that that came and then when i was in graduate school you know there were some forums where you could you know the graduate students were given a chance to invite speakers and of course i would go <laughs> like yeah let's do this this is fun to do i don't know i just always had enthusiasm, enthusiasm. and willing to engage with the world it's there only been sometimes and typically when i'm ill hmm. that i have not done that and and so i would just do it you know and there were i remember notably when i was in graduate school there was a big job search when i was a third or fourth year student and i went in i think of course i would attend all seminars mm. so that was not the problem but i went and had lunch with most of those mm. uh, things uh, most of those people exactly. two of them one of them got hired at brandeis mm. and is still someone i chat with yes. and is is you know sort of works a worm biologist another person i met her first at that time and she's a faculty now in usd mm. sd mm. and you know we get strains from her mm. Mm-hmm. I've given a uh, talk in her department, so you know you never know where your exactly. scientific connections are. Exactly. It's just, it's just be an open person and go and enjoy. I don't know. I enjoy all kinds of science. I would go when I was in grad school and listen to talks in anthropology, <laughs> and, and uh, uh, physics was hard because I think you needed a lot of background. But certainly chemistry yes. and not a single. thing in biology that i missed i would just go i would just go and listen i would sometimes go if i saw some talk advertised in mit or harvard and i saw that i would take the train from brandeis and i would go and listen <laughs> and i'll say oh come let one or two more people go i say no no i i'm just like that wonderful wonderful <laughs> it's a, it's a great attitude sandeep because uh, it is actually not common uh because at least whatever i've seen see uh i'm not actually wanting to blame also generations and other things that is also not the right way to sometimes uh, frame the problem i have also seen that sometimes people in in spite of the fact that you have an opportunity to make use of the knowledge which is available in the environment sometimes don't grasp that particular but chance. you know i think back when i was in graduate school and perhaps it was me and then my housemate who was a, mm. who was japanese mm. still very good friends mm. with her who were the only people who were like that exactly <laughs> but most of them were not, not you know yes, so i mean you yes. can't expect, expect. it it's it, no, no. it's like you know some some people were interested in other things some people would show up and go you know sh- would go running every <laughs> day right i mean and you would look at them with awe because they're going running every day but they might not go to every seminar Same so Pretty, I, yeah. I i just think that when you are engaged with the scientific career and i often say this to my students engage fully, fully at least for the period of your phd so that you know what it's like and and then see where it takes you wonderful wonderful <laughs> this is uh, an important uh, lesson not only for students <laughs> for for all of us who are involved in in some or the other way the pursuit of science so coming back to you to the chronology of yes. your, of your your <laughs> biography is uh, that uh, how, how was it in your school like uh, especially the formative years Uh, were you also exposed to uh, biology in your school and college and other so places? So, my the second school I went to, um, used to sometimes show these movies, hmm. and this one movie I really remember. They would show nature movies, hmm. right? It's fantastic, and they would. Hmm. There was this one movie where they, you know, you were sitting in the bloodstream, and then they would show you the RBC, the hmm. WBC. They never showed physics movies like that. I don't know why. <laughs> but you know they you know we didn't have a television mm. for it because there wasn't yeah, any yeah, television exactly. but post asia had games yeah. or something my parents yeah. got television there was this um and i don't i've looked for it on youtube but never found it there was this guy who would come they would play those video they would play those things where he would do experiments with light you know reflection yes, refraction yes, yes. i was <laughs> mesmerized and that part of physics really made sense yes, to me yeah, yeah. yeah? and i could understand it really yeah. well and and i i just loved it you know <laughs> so i was very i was very lucky in that you know so my mother by chance she said hey sandhya this is coming on tv <laughs> and i will find a way to record it for you because i would come home after that the you know the colony oh. where my parents uh, their parents live was very far from the city so you had to take bus and mm-hmm. all of that and come back 
and so she found a way to record it and then you know then i would watch it afterwards mm. and it was mesmerizing but so i was very lucky, lucky to have all of seen all of that and of course they did it mm. at enbaru how can oh, you yeah. mean whatever yeah. little <laughs> that showed up and it was just yeah it was uh, such simpler times yeah. you know my parents were wonderful when i was in college my father was actually working in nagotni mm. which is in maharashtra mm. and so we would come to see him so my parents actually so they were quite mm. amazing they gave me money to become a member of the british council library in bombay so every summer vacation i used to stay in some guest mm. house of the uh, of the company i would take two buses go there spend the whole day De- watching various nature and other science videos that they had lot of david attenborough mm. i'd also read widely they would let you issue books and then i would return it and it was i mean it didn't ha- it happened a couple of summers but couple of summers is a it's lot all, it's, it's already a lot i wasn't doing any internships exactly exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's just no because that that engagement that that particular time uh, is uh, not like the engagement right now you're not m- mixing it with so many things which means that the the immersion is much more there was only two immersion at that mm. time i used to go to go to somebody's house and play learn to play the veena for several hours and then i would get to, from there i would go to the beach council like nice. spend the rest of the time there come back in the night do do, do you still play veena yeah. uh, not anymore really? no, <laughs> not wow. anymore i have a veena i huh. should and my mom feels very sad that i'm not doing it actually my veena teacher just died a couple of weeks ago so yeah but it was a marvelous time yeah. very happy time wonderful wonderful so now we're going to go forward in the uh, in the timeline and uh, kind of look at the point where you're really becoming interested and uh, more seriously kind of involved in biology per se uh, was there a specific inflection where you were of course you had this background and you already yeah. had some motivation but where did you make a choice or a decision that you're going to do biology as a career no that was made very early very early so my <laughs> mom actually suggested i do medicine mm-hmm. uh but my form for medical college was not submitted oh so <laughs> so mm-hmm. my uh, father gave it to somebody to submit <coughs> or submit nahi hua so mm. my form for engineering and the things were submitted so mm. i we went for counseling and they said you can do engineering when i said i was on, said pharmacy karo my parents were standing outside i don't know what they expected mm-hmm. they didn't tell me anything i said nahi karne ka nahi ke baat wow i gave Is up it? that yeah okay. yeah okay interesting <laughs> i said no i will do and it was actually a scary time because a lot of people at that time did only engineering, engineering. and medicine yeah. and i also grew up at a time when i said this before people got married girls got married between 22 and 24 mm. and that was it you know and and so you didn't see anything else there were very few people who were working or even worked as a career, career. they would work a little bit they might mm. leave and bring in money and that was the it was a different time so i said no i came back and then my parents said should we try to spend a lot of money and send her to a paid college and that would have been very hard for us and he said appa and amma don't do mm. that mm. so i just studied in the local university and someone told appa is my appa has actually got a phd okay wow. he did a phd in isc whose doors i never saw till i finished my msc and had my phd admission he had no connection he said i'm not a scientist and he came to industry and that was it he said those people are very different they are interested in science i'm not a scientist he just that was his conclusion after doing a phd wow that's very unusual <laughs> no i mean uh, and and you know what he never thought himself less for it he mm. just said mm. they were different and so that was good no and <laughs> you know no, i, I mean to say uh, going into industry and uh, really getting involved in in totally different things he had no friends from that time also okay interesting <laughs> really remarkable mm. actually of course they quite person but he had like nobody there was no mm. connection at all and the only other person from that time was someone who had done an mtech in iit who still a friend of right. his and who still you know like someone so, we know very yeah, well yeah. and we hang out with and he also went off to industry oh is it okay <laughs> so, yeah 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 it was so 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 some but someone told him that it might be or someone told me you want to study biology you have to do chemistry hmm. so i went and did a bsc in chemistry <laughs> ah, okay. and i liked it i loved doing practicals i would spend hours and hours trying to get the perfect 
you know, do it right. I would go and read in the library mm. and, uh, you know, figure out what is the best way to do gravimetric analysis. Mm. How can you get the best yield? Any experiment I approached the same way. I could see, maybe it was not thoughtfully done, but anybody who saw me realized that I enjoyed mm -hmm. that process. And then, you know, the first chance I could after that was to do biology. Actually, I would say my whole life is one of persistence. That I have faced failure all through. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did not get into IITs and all of those fancy places. I went to my local university. After the end of my local university, there was this uh, JNU biotechnology program, mm -hmm. which had just started. Yeah. I did not get through that. Mm -hmm. I went to, again, my local university, which was a good place. Yeah. MS University Biochemistry it, it, was a very good place. It's not very but easy I to was, get in there. Huh? <laughs> but maybe if you were, if you were a local kid uh, and a local student, uh, I think they had some quota for that. Uh, so really, you know, I don't know if I ever, ever would ever have made, made it through. I, I think I would have still done what I did. Uh, but those were, you know, I was just lucky to have managed to get into a reasonable place at each time, not the best place. And I think what was transformative when I started doing biochemistry in MS University, Baroda, hmm. it, that was a transformative experience in so many ways. See, most of, the most of my classmates had come from Mumbai. They were from a big city. They had a lot of polish. They had done biology already. They had done microbiology in their BSc and biochemistry in their BSc. They knew things that come from chemistry. I didn't even know anything in biology. It was a huge gulf. And chemistry, which which chemistry you uh, were you? So I think you studied general, all, general all, all, all of it. And hmm. then my second subject was physics. Oh, okay. And the third one I took was zoology, which was very classical, Classic. classical hmm. zoology, right? So it was like dissections hmm. and things hmm. like that. There was no modern biology. Hmm. So I felt very much on the back foot. And I think I really struggled the first year in trying to gain everything. And then the first year we had a teacher come from, who had done a PhD in TIFR. And I just saw him recently and mm. I tweeted, tweeted it. And he started asking us questions. He would say, so why do you say what you say? How do you think life works? What is life? And, you know, we had never learned to think like that. But to be fair, lots of our teachers then mm. were yeah. very good. They taught us analytical thinking. You know, the question papers were very thoughtful. There was Dr. Srivastava who was who used to teach us enzymology and his question papers were very, very interesting. Sarita Gupta, you know, she was an okay teacher, but mm. her question papers would make you think. think. Mm. Tara Mehta, who was my master's thesis project coordinator and taught us an entire paper of nutrition, which was one of the strengths of the department and really taught me an enormous mm. amount by, you know, not teaching me personally, but just by being around is how to be critical. So everybody would do experiments and the exam was, the final exam was you take every person in the class's experiments, plot everybody's data, try to explain the differences. Mm. Why did you get what you did? Nice. No massaging. So plot the data as it. And we did experiments on each other, which would never be done now, right? Mm. So I was the Balika Bakra who had to take <laughs> a huge dose of uh, crystalline caffeine and see the effect on uh, calcium secretion. We w I would draw blood from people. I was fearless in doing all these things. And then we would measure things, mm. right? We had to do our food intake and then, you know, do experiments to figure out how much calcium, how much this, how much that we got. Very interesting. So I would say that in all, we had... We had a very rigorous program. It was very stressful. I think I barely slept. Mm. But thinking back, I also learned an enormous, enormous amount. And 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 the other thing which happened in my uh, by my MSc was that I applied to a summer training program in CCMB, which was mm. transformative mm. again. Mm. You know, mm. I had I worked in a university with broken windows which you can climb into. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was, right? And then you go to a modern biology <laughs> institute, which had AC everywhere. You could go and take enzymes that you wanted to ex <laughs> You didn't have to take permission. It was not in the locked door. Oh my God, there was an animal house which someone else took care of. You didn't have to go Saturday, Sunday, anytime to go and change the cages yes. and feed things. It was remarkable. Mm. I think that was a very very unusual time and that was also the time there was a journal club running there mm. um, which was run by Rakesh Mishra, Girish Deshpande, 
uh, Raghavendra Nagaraj and somebody mm. else called Sanjay. Mm. So I think Rakesh was a scientific officer but or a postdoc. Yeah. I don't know mm. what he was. He was working in the Pankaj lab where I was mm. doing my summer training. All the rest were grad students and they would discuss developmental biology papers and they were looking at fruit flies and all of that. But I would go and sit there for every single journal club trying to understand something. <laughs> no, this is a very important point what you're mentioning. It's you know, completely nuts. <laughs> a lot of understanding uh, during the formative years actually happened first to, through just some kind of an exposure, me literally exposure. That's all, right? You just go and just see. Twenty-year-old <laughs> kid doesn't yeah. understand anything, yeah. or twenty-one so yeah. shows up over there. But they were very kind, kind you know. Yeah. They did whatever. They didn't like discourage me from sitting yeah. there. Clearly, I didn't understand anything. <laughs> but I, I thought they were so cool, and they could find all this out, and 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 that was also. So I would say that was a transformative yes, experience, absolutely. and that was also. The time which I think you know I had never even considered doing a PhD outside the country it had not even occurred to me to be frank but other graduate students over there say no no you can't do a PhD in India you have to do it abroad what is it doing it in India it's not any good and I'm like why it's not good you will not get anything I'll tell you people are so mean and I was in a place where nobody was mean to me so I was like what is going on but then I came back and very beautifully reported to my mother you know, that's what they said. Mm. So maybe I should apply abroad. And to their fairness, she said, okay. They both said, my parents said, okay, try. Mm. I didn't even know how to try. I didn't know anything. I had to wow. find out from somebody who had a brother in IIT mm. that there was something that you write called GRE. I didn't even know that you could apply to Europe. You know, literally like very small town kid. Small town kid really did not know anything. So then there was something I figured out that you can go to some place called USCFI mm. and you have to go and look at something called the Peterson Guide to <laughs> shortlist you. So I went and looked and it's like this giant thing. I don't know anything. So he's saying which of these places have developmental pro. Then you find out it's so expensive to apply. Right. This is the course. So then I made some list of some 10 places and some of them I picked were things which, uh, which you know, did not have which you could waive the application, yeah, yeah, application fee so i applied did not know how to write a statement of purpose did not know mm-hmm. anything I, so not surprisingly got rejected right so the place which i really wanted to go to because i had read some great things about developmental biology and all and i didn't know you could write to professors yeah. this is all done by it's post gross. okay there was no email <laughs> I sent my application to University of Wisconsin in Madison. Pandra din mm. lagta hai jane ko. Actually, I sent it all to my uncle because to get foreign exchange to yeah. apply was also uh, very, very difficult. difficult yes. So my uncle who was in the US said, we will cover that. You can, you know, give it back to us later. So I, my grandmother was visiting, sent it to mm. my grandmother. Then they, they sent they sent one application. Pandra din ke baad, I got my reject and I sobbed like anything. And I got rejected mm-hmm. from all the places that I was really interested in. And so quite by chance, somebody uh, visited my father who had mm. had some scientific mm. exposure. And he said, why are you applying to these kinds of places like UCSF mm. and mm. Harvard? Tumko nahi milega. You mm. should have some safe school. Mm. And I was very, I just looked at them and said, it mm. didn't even occur to, I didn't even know, didn't know what, what a safe, safe school was. <laughs> <laughs> I got into Brandeis <laughs> from the wait list. No, but, you know, Brian... from the wait list and we had not heard of this you know people hear about Harvard and yeah. MIT and UCSF they do, what is this place so the friend who was in, uh, in, in the micro in the biotechnology the prestigious biotechnology program his brother was in MIT and mm. Brandeis was somewhere in the Boston area so we spent money to call him up to ask him mm. <laughs> It's a proper university. <laughs> so, okay. I'm not joking. So no, I'm... no. This is a very important point what you're making. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to come to two points uh, specifically. This is a fascinating uh, thing what you're talking about. Uh, because one and the first and the most important thing is uh, 
there are very good schools for example brandeis actually anybody would be who would be wanting to go now to person to who has done my thesis committee went on to win the nobel, nobel prize. prize yeah exactly <laughs> i have taken courses with him i have ta for him exactly and kalpana most of the phd students are in faculty positions and all of our postdocs exactly. are in faculty positions so that tells you something something also. precisely right precisely. and i ended up working on a floor which was all women pis Monto. which i didn't even know was unusual precisely till i came back to india mm. so you know i was like <laughs> no no this is something very important what you just mentioned also very you know It's kind numerous. of like humorous humorous uh, the other point is uh, you know there is there has been a transformation per se not just only in india everywhere see the information was on premium right even when i was growing on the very similar timelines uh the fact that you actually are now searching for a for a small answer within a larger research problem is uh, will take you to a library and the library is going to be the place where you have to really search, search and you will get there for lots of other things on the side side so you actually have to really skim through it's it was not even like you have a prola prola is for example earlier the aps had or the okay. american physical society papers you had to search through or any kind of journals whatever you do pubmed or something like that it's it's now literally on a click of a of a button this part of uh, information reducing it, its premium has actually changed the dynamics of yeah. the the way we look at it as you clearly mentioned but i think the hmm? democratization of information is marvelous Absolutely. in the long term but i think what it has also done is increase anxiety because now you're looking at what metrics are to be met to be successful instead of saying let me just do what i'm doing exactly. and we'll see what comes out Precisely in the end right. i mean i tell i tell this to people you know my life is <coughs> the thing persistence resilience <laughs> these are the only two thing i never ended up in famous places <laughs> i never worked with famous places And if I can succeed, I think anybody can <laughs> succeed. I never got into any fancy schools or fancy places. <laughs> no, no, this is something very, very important. Uh, sometimes doesn't get registered in in people because uh, you know you you are seeing that uh, if you keep interest as your central core uh, and you propel yourself with that particular core. uh there are a lot of uh, happen tan- happenstance and accidents positive accidents which may happen which will actually put you in in the right path or you might not even call it as a right path it will put you on a path <laughs> right and uh, that's kind of a random walk yeah, but that interesting things can, can happen, happen no and you stay open to the possibilities no brandis was fabulous mm. i think mm. what was very nice is i saw people through this hmm. uh, through alok who was the friend of amit hmm. um, who was the brother of amit who was my friend the people in mit and harvard seemed very straight they had strategies <laughs> when they went to to you know big meetings on how they would do career development and i was being little old me saying if my today and tomorrow is going to go okay right and and i i and i didn't want that you know because i was happy where i was i was doing what i liked i was learning i screwed up plenty my mm. first rotation i completely made a mess of my experimental design made a mistake <laughs> did everything the graduate program advisor had to call me up and said you know you don't know how to write at all you have to rewrite your <laughs> rotation report it was i couldn't write for peanuts and i know how important it is and i thought i could write but i is obviously logical thinking and logical flow of ideas and how to present it was not something i'd learned and then you know you sort of you learned from there so even my even my first part of my comprehensive which was called uh, you know comprehensive 1 mm. my my project which i had written i had no figures in it and it was <laughs> but i could defend the proposal extremely right. well because i had thought of everything mm-hmm. and i had revved everything i was super straight but i was able to defend it well and they said you know your writing has to improve mm-hmm. you have to put these things in i was like okay for next mm-hmm. time so mm-hmm. you know you it was an opportunity where people gave me time and space to grow my phd supervisor was marvelous she mm-hmm. gave me the one thing which i really wanted and sought which was uh, freedom to mm. go and mm. try my own stuff i wanted to learn genetics she said here yeah. and i said i'll work on this gene which was gene i'd worked in my rotation he said here's a stack of alleles 
of this gene and here's a stack of flights start no project nothing, nothing. you had to create it mm. but i think that taught me something absolutely oh you should tell me my rotation mm. so i was like i want to do <coughs> developmental biology is a mm. program which has no developmental biologist <laughs> in the program okay period <laughs> i think now has a couple sort of but not then so kalpana was the closest mm. so one rotation one mm. rotation with the yeast guy we can think of you know <laughs> mating type stitching is maybe a developmental problem and sometime my second rotation i discovered that this textbook that i had seen when i was in doing my msc from william jens in biochemistry which was not the common leninger Very and i loved that textbook he's a faculty here chalo developmental biology chodo and go and do a rotation in biochemistry <laughs> wow. wow and i went and i had a great Very time nice. and he taught me something he said you should know when to drop a problem when mm. something is a failure and he was fantastic i mean i think he would have been very very good to learn from but i said okay i'll go and work in this thing i saw that most of the people in his lab they would spend long times thinking instead of doing, doing. they would spend time more time thinking than doing and when i would ask him this so different from other labs yeah but you are trying to answer this and you don't know if this experiment mm. that you're designing will really answer mm. this sabhi hota hai exactly <laughs> right and then i said maybe i should work with you and he said look i'm getting old go and work with a younger person mm-hmm. so that that was also very wise thing that i saw from him that people can be so balanced, balanced. about balanced about it you know it's not only that they always want to get students but they're thinking about whether they can mm-hmm. train them and no kalpana's lab was fabulous i had a good time i mm. mean of course there were stressful times mm. but i expect you know i don't expect life to be a walk yeah, in the yeah. park right <laughs> overall i'm looking for a positive outcome so i learned an enormous mm-hmm. amount she gave me a lot of freedom i made friends i met someone who eventually became my husband mm-hmm. so it was transformative in so many ways and i, I mean as i said i had the opportunity i went and listened to music i hiked mm-hmm. i i listened to so much science right. and i was just happy i was i would say you know yes there were fluctuations there were periods of unhappiness and i became i always say this mm-hmm. i loved two flies which mm. is what yeah, i had I, fallen in I, love with yes, by yes. seeing those pictures yes. so i worked in a fruit fly lab they didn't love me back i was mm. severely allergic i so have open wounds on my face oh, i was it? taking oral steroids i don't know how i finished my phd <laughs> but i did and it was a terrible terrible it was terrible it was truly terrible it was so there was all that oh, suffering and all of that as well but overall i would still say it was fun i remember i would go and volunteer for some human experiments to see if rotation <laughs> in a putting you in a tube made you sleep better and i would sit <laughs> with that thing and sleep in it i just i i had a blast wonderful wonderful <laughs> i just you know just curious, curious about curious the about uh, see that's that's the element you know that's actually again an unusual point uh you already have mentioned persistence and resilience is actually the, the other part is curiosity and fun we, just yeah, fun. because uh, see these are all combinations sometimes we take things for granted uh, because as you mentioned very nicely in in making the analogy of somebody apping for uh, let's say a big university is making strategies is actually trying to look at how you got to really crack I me mean, see i can understand because the, really it's important for people who want to do planning and other things now here you are actually taking it one one day at a time one step at a time this is also a viable model in fact a lot of stress sometimes actually comes from the fact that you may plan too much and if there is a small deviation from from that plan then you make yourself very unhappy unhappy about it and i'm saying this because you also see when you interact with students because many of them actually are uh rightly so a uh, bit apprehensive of what's going to happen into their into their future yeah. okay i in fact i'm glad that somebody some some students are thinking about yeah. their future instead of let's say not even worrying about it yeah. but but you don't have to really go too 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 ahead of yourself yeah. and you know uh, put a lot no, of stress i no? i certainly worried about it because mm. everybody else was worrying <laughs> yeah, about it yeah. they were all thinking about even even in my program they were thinking about what next everything and i looked at all of this and said look i will do this as long as i can if i can't do it i will de- i will figure it figure out that at that time you know bigger crisis which i had was in the second year of uh, graduate school where i realized that you may not really understand anything properly in biology at all and it was too complicated i went through this complete and unhappy crisis and there was this physicist called karl cantor and 
I had some physics uh, friends in the physics graduate rooms, or at least good acquaintances. And I would go and ask them questions about, you know, how can you understand? Do you understand things? Do you have good predictability? Mm -hmm. So if you have understood things, you should be either able to build it. Engineer, yeah. my father was an engineer. You can take it apart, put it up. And I had spent plenty of time sitting beside him when he was taking things apart <laughs> and putting it, <laughs> putting it together. Or you should be able to predict what is going to happen. So I said, I'm in the wrong graduate program. Can't do biology. Can't understand anything. I was a crisis. That was a bigger crisis than whether I would find a job. <laughs> And then I used to read books like Tao of Physics, Physics, which he had science to do me. And I was like, and then I realized, <coughs> yeah, yeah, ne, let's give this a chance. Yes. So I'm here. Maybe I'll understand something. Or maybe that's what is interesting, that it's so complex that you can only understand small parts of it. I'm sorry. I have to admit that that was a bigger crisis for me than finding out whether I will have a job ja. or whatever. So this... It all actually also comes Clueless. down. Clueless. I yeah. still am like that. No, no. That, that's a great attitude. See, I was just about to come to that point. Because, you know, it's actually a good way of living. In, 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 in my opinion, of course. And I, you, you actually... Sometimes you bite off more than you no, can no, chew. No, but the issue is that... Uh, see, there is a, a... There is a world. There is a universe to grasp. I'm, I'm going a little philosophical here. Because if you really uh, want to... Uh, explore things purely as a human being. See, every scientist is actually a subset of the human kind yes. of thing. Yes. The, everybody can be a scientist. In fact, that is something which probably is all, all of us agree all that. Us. Everybody has curiosity. Everybody has curiosity. Everybody, in my opinion, has scientific thinking. You look at a child who burns himself, you're never Absolutely. going to put his finger back again in the Absolutely fire. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. I can't actually overemphasize over this particular yeah. point. The fact that we sometimes tend to make this a, a kind of an ivory towerish aspect of somebody who is working in a laboratory is the only person who will have to be called. In fact, when high school students approach me, and most recently one high school student approached me, I had some huh. very thoughtful thing on I want to do research in Parkinson's disease. I was thinking, Tumari ghar mein, why don't you do some experiments exactly. with uh, with some cockroaches which are around? <laughs> Or geckos, you know, I'm seeing an explosion of gecko population <laughs> or what they what we call lizards in the house. Why might that be happening? That's a great thing to go and investigate. You know, Absolutely. I, I, I just think that it has become much more formal instead formal. of just let's go let's, and explore what is around so, us. So, so important. <laughs> you know, this is more so also uh, not just only in, in biology. Even in physics, the similar thing I happens. I think physics experiments are far easier to do. Yeah, uh, no, far easier. But there is also, see, there's an element within physics where... Uh, it won't be necessarily new, new, but it's new yeah. for you. Yeah, new for you. Absolutely. <laughs> and the other interesting thing is you can also approach a lot of things through mathematics there. Yeah. And uh, some of the students or children who really get exposed to mathematics, they get the flavor of doing the physics through mathematics. So sometimes I, I sheepishly mentioned that it is actually a negative for experimental physics sometimes yes. because you tend to only just look at only one view, viewpoint, which yes. is very important. Mathematics is actually important because, for example, I cannot do anything without mathematics, even though I do experimental physics. But uh, that, that dirtying your hands is, is so important. And you are, as you mentioned, you know, you're literally playing with the bubbles and also the soap and other things. This brings me to the point of the fact that you are now all the way taken your thought process from being deeply interested in something which is biology based, genetics, what really motivated you. You have now gone to Brandeis, you are working on fruit flies. Doing <laughs> yeah. genetics. Yeah, doing genetics. <laughs> working on neurons. Neurons, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about the problem you were working on. So, the, the gene that I very innocently <laughs> sort of asked my PI said, I'm going to work on LME or something like that because I'd worked on it in a in a in my rotation project. It was an RNA binding protein expressed in all neurons. And she was looking at a cluster of genes which are important in forming the nervous system or functioning in the nervous system, which is in the tip of the X chromosome of the fruit fly. And she said, yeah, start. And then we knew it was an RNA binding protein. And there were two graduate students who were working on this gene before me. Okay. So and they were trying to figure out whatever they were trying to figure out. and But they weren't doing genetics. So I, I actually struggled in the beginning of graduate mm -hmm. school because I think I didn't have the maturity to define a problem. I did not understand the papers I was reading. 
there wasn't much to read in the genetics Genetic. of RNA binding proteins. There was a whole lot of bewildering stuff about RNAs which had been discovered in splicing and RNA stability. I couldn't find the relationship between that and this. And, you know, everything in the beginning was hard. And reading papers was hard. Mm. I would read the same papers 20 times over <laughs> to understand a little bit. But that's normal, right? It didn't phase me, I should say that, mm. right? Mm. And then, you know, she could see that I was struggling mm. and I was just learning how to do crosses and learning. And she said, why don't you try some experiments? Maybe see what proteins are changed and do some westerns. I tried to do those westerns and look at things. She said, maybe you can isolate a protein and something will be different. And I was looking at it and said, Mujhe aise experiments nahi karne. <laughs> Ye baut boring experiments hai. to grind is so soulless and this, that and the other. To this day, I'm not a big fan of gels and other things. Mm. Although it has to be done and it's important and I'll do them when it's needed. And of course, I tell my students, you have to do whatever experiment is needed. But then I just started gaining some maturity and I said, let me go and check in different ways. And <coughs> see, I had developed this allele mm. um, which had reduction of LAV only in the photoreceptor mm. neurons. Because if you remove this gene, the animal, animal was lethal. Skin. So I managed to get this allele by a small genetic trick. Uh, to, which reduced it only in the photoreceptor neuron. And I started thinking, not even very systematically, I said, I have this, so now let me see what else is affected. Mm -hmm. And below, before all of this, I saw some fruit fly which had a funny eye color and I tried to map the gene. So I was doing all this crazy mm -hmm. stuff also. I, that's been the story of my life. I'll go and try a lot of different things, just like that, even in my own life. And uh, and then I found that there was an effect on several genes, so LAV. Uh, affected the expression of erect wing. It's aff aff affected the particular splice isoform of a cell addition molecule called neuroglion. And, uh, you know, and that was like, that was, I still remember the experiment when I saw that neuroglion data, hmm. the long isoform was affected. I knew I will get a thesis. Up until that time, I didn't even know. I did my comprehensive with my project proposal. Mm. And at the end of it all, one of my thesis committee members told, uh, told me and then came and told my PI as well. I don't think this project is going anywhere. Wow. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I passed though because uh, I defended it the yeah, best yeah, I could. Yeah. And I was like, Achha, hai. Fail ho gaya, kuch aur kar <laughs> That is, the, that is great. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't cry. I didn't feel bad. I didn't do anything. I said, I passed. Now let me, I fulfilled my commitment. No, now let me do what I want. You all go away from here. Great idea. I don't, I, it was not something I thought about. You see, I just, I didn't think that some terrible thing would happen at the end of it. I, naive. I, yeah. And I think that's quite, I am quite naive in many ways. Still continue yeah. to be. I tend to worry things more about things now. I'm like, it's not as if I didn't worry about right. it. I worried that I would I would not pass and other things. But I didn't worry that they said the most oh, important in the project was horrible. <laughs> no, but it's also very subjective, right? Because so, no, no, no. Huh? That was... <laughs> Was there an objective? <laughs> that objective was a... <laughs> but as it happened, it turned out to be useful in a very paradoxical See, manner, right? Because you know which nobody could have predicted. And in fact, the person who was there in that committee, he came and heard my thesis defense and he came and told me after that. Uh, not my thesis, after the thesis defense, which was closed, mm -hmm. or we had to give a talk to the community. He came and said, very nice work. You've done very well. I was mm -hmm. like, and that Thanks. was also my first rotation yeah. where I tanked badly. <laughs> so... No, this but also, I tanked badly in that rotation, but he was still willing to take, take me, you know, me in his me. lab. So that, you know, so I just, I feel lucky that people are willing to give me a chance. No, that is because many a times, uh, if, because you are now, uh, tables have turned, you are now, uh, you know, mentor and you have also mentored so many people. You see that uh, many a times it's better to, uh, to give an opportunity to people who are uh, willing to put time and effort yeah. with enthusiasm rather than somebody whom you feel that has a some great idea but you are not sure whether the person is going to put you know, put a lot of time and effort there is probably yeah. uh, uh, because even i sometimes feel that because even i have been fortunate and uh, you know i have gratitude to a lot of people who have given me opportunities in the past not that uh, something spectacular was done or anything like that um, but you stayed in the game. You which I, I realized this very early on that you have to stay in the game. Absolutely. You can't get deleted from it. 
but you know you do it the way you can and want to i think that's very important and i think i couldn't have articulated when i was younger now for the past uh, Seven eight years, I can articulate it very clearly because it's a lived, lived experience. experience. Lived experience. Exactly. You know, you no, you you did you mention persistence and uh, resilience. Yeah, you know that is actually a very very. But if you had asked me even ten years ago, yeah. I would have not been able to pick out those two words. No, that is because see, <laughs> uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. Exactly. Uh, because then we realize <laughs> you don't even realize when you're being persistent, persistent. or it, when see, you are being resilient. When you are you know looking at your whole faces. Open source, and you're thinking you have so many crosses to do. Everything is itching. You yeah. still have to show up and do the work. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. This is absolutely correct. See, our own lives until now, all the gathered information what we have, just by living, <laughs> nothing like you. You purposefully grasp it. That okay. you, you, you see that a lot of things what you grasp as you move forward in in into your life, and when you also cross some particular timelines in your age, you'll see that. the fact that there were so many other people parallelly moving in your own path who nearly dropped out of that particular path and could not actually do what you are doing now just because they dropped out of that particular yeah. path so it, this is also a kind of a lesson to a lot of people sometimes who get stressed yeah. and comes back to the two two particular words you did mention mm-hmm. persistence and resilience mm-hmm. yeah. i'm not telling to you know punish oneself but it is just a merely being being still there you know and showing up i think up. i think fundamentally it's because there was something about it which drew me and yeah. something that that well spring of passion as i said has never run dry i and i was lucky in brandeis you know people mm. were not mm. very hung up about or maybe that was only from the perspective of the student i never felt you know it didn't seem that someone who got a high profile paper was celebrated as a yes, student sorry. much more than a person who got it in a in a society journal mm-hmm. i never felt that you know i was treated the same so i have imbibed Amen. those values and i thought it was a very good place to be as a graduate student you know i didn't know some of the people i studied with who were around me were famous mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so michael rosbash and jeff hall got the nobel, nobel prize yeah. i didn't know <laughs> eve marder was famous she got a presidential <laughs> medal <laughs> for <laughs> science okay <laughs> i and somebody vatsala therumale who is <laughs> she worked with her as a phd <laughs> student but i took a course with her i i didn't even know she was famous yeah. chris miller his work is in textbooks Text yeah. and he was the one who once got a bunch of graduate students together i don't know what there was some formal thing we all showed up and he said you know you should go and work with assistant professor you should not work with these old people who are very well established and you'll be working with people who are excited and maybe even on the bench some of us looked at each other me somebody else in the same batch mate who was who was in 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 my lab and my housemate yeah. we all went and did our post doc with assistant professors <laughs> you know it's like ha ha ye bahut acha idea hai chalo karte you know and nobody will tell you this anymore yes, right you just yes. go and explore and i had a great time in my post doc as well i still talk to him i respect like and enjoy spending Thanks. time with those people you know and i did not expect them to handhold me which they neither, neither of them not. did and they gave me what i wanted most which was freedom to freedom. be myself now this is uh, a day held me to high standards yeah. with respect to science and other things see that's what but i held myself <coughs> to high standards, high standards too you you it's it's uh, uh, richard feynman has a very nice uh, kind of uh, saying he tells that uh, science is uh, imagination in straight jacket <laughs> right yeah, i agree uh, because uh, you uh, you actually are free to really think any way you want yes. but, but is, then you finally have to get that evidence which is yeah holds true and that's uh, very so, important and uh, uh, why i'm uh, paralleling this is uh, because in a the laboratory there is enough room for you to be very creative yeah. uh, but uh, there is also a kind of a loose boundary yes around which uh, it is uh, for example values of course there is no way you would be uh, kind of looking at it as anything uh, uh, as as anything uh, lesser than any other things but for example you can always think about problems uh, work on things uh, in a, in a different way so this brand is experience uh, for uh, took you forward and uh, also probably gave you an exposure of uh, doing science which actually is rigorous and yet enjoyable if i understand correctly yes mm-hmm. rigorous and enjoyable it absolutely is. very rigorous mm-hmm. and enjoyable i and also 
exposed me to a lot of people. I saw people who were very stressed and people who flunked out in the comprehensive mm. and all of that. And I had empathy for them. But it never sort of changed my equation with science. Right? That, that I still found it enjoyable. That I still found it exciting. That I was a person who would be always... My housemate and me would discuss science almost every day. You know, we had slightly different schedules, but in the night we would discuss our individual experiments. Mm. And she was a tremendous influence because she had done a master. She had much more research experience when she started a PhD, unlike me. Uh, she had worked with Jeff before and had come mm. back. And we just, you know, I, I respected her enormously and she had so much discipline. And... I learned from that and I said, oh, I need to make my thinking more systematic. No, I need to get things done mm. much more so, not just explore and have fun because there's nobody to say that to me in the lab. So I, I learned an enormous amount from people who were around me and and I was I consider myself a very lucky mm. and I made lifelong friends over there. And I Very fortunate. Okay. I, think, I think people... I think going to the US also changed my life in mm, more ways. Mm. I think if I'd been in India, the more natural thing would have been I would have been married young. Mm. And while I would have done a PhD, I'm not sure whether I would have had a career. Career, yeah. right? Because that's hard to pull off sometimes. So I think being there gave me the space without, without having, without having that daily pressure, pressure. that somehow I was falling short. So. Yeah, many things, yeah. many things. I was very, very, very lucky. And my postdoc was also very nice. And where did you fun. move to postdoc? Uh, I went to Washington University School oh. of Medicine in mm. St. Louis mm. to an assistant professor's lab. And we hit it off. So he had mm. come to some meeting in the Boston area. I was already applying in the middle of, mm. towards, the, towards mm. the end, but not really to then. I planned where I was. I picked the problem I wanted to work mm. on. I wanted to do genetics and in vivo stuff. I wanted to add some live imaging. C. Elegans offered a nice model, but I wrote to yeah. other people. I also wrote to Ron Vale, by the mm. way, who was a very big motors yeah. guy, and he wrote back saying, I'm looking for a biophysicist, mm. and, you know, said mm. I was not suitable. So I ran into him later mm. in my career. And uh, and uh, we met in, in a breakfast place in Boston, and we just hit it off scientifically, because yeah. he had the same boundless curiosity about science as mm. I did, and you know, we discussed random papers <laughs> nice, <laughs> that nice. we had read, and random things, it was like, this would be a great guy to work on, exactly. totally my exactly. wavelength, <laughs> exactly. right? Yeah, not a wavelength, yeah. I'm going, that's it. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. and so it's, it, it was not think. I mean, it was not completely that he had been, of course, very yeah. successful before. And he was saying things were happening in his lab. But I was not in a very big lab. And I went to an even smaller lab where I was the only postdoc for a long time. Okay, okay. But I still had a very good experience. Mm -hmm. And then taking that course was very good. good yeah. And Jeff Lickman. Uh, and when I first joined, there was this Saturday morning people would meet and discuss papers. John Heuser, mm. Jeff Lickman. They would present classic papers of looking at neurotransmission at the synapse, which is not something I was doing, doing. at all. Mike was doing, uh, that is my postdoctoral advisor, Mike Nune was doing it in the worm model. But that's not the question I came to study. But I learned an enormous amount. Again, the barrier was huge, huge because I didn't know any of the background. And they were discussing fine nuances. But that exposure helped. And this was like, it started right after I joined, right? Because it was already going already on a couple it. of them. So I would show up. Saturday morning mm. to go and listen to that, even though it was not exactly what I was working on. And then at some time in my postdoc, I remember saying, I need to set up this method. I'd been trying on my own. It wasn't working. Then I saw some paper published that someone had done it in Worms. It was actually a biophysics lab. I just wrote to him and said, can I come and visit mm. for, you know, 10 days and see how you do it? Because mm. I've been studying. He said, yes. I told Mike, Mike, I will pay for the stay. I will stay in a mm. motel and I'll pay for the stay. Will you pay for the ticket? ticket. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he said, I'll pay for the ticket. So yeah. I went, I stayed in a motel. Uh, I would take the bus, bus. from that motel <laughs> to the place and I figured out how they did it, what were the problems, what was not. And I <laughs> and then came <laughs> and made friends yeah. along the way. So, you know, I just don't know. I mean, I have never, it has never. So that was very good. That was fun. I had fun in my postdoc. I also became a parent twice over. Wow. And my husband, when, when you were in postdoc? <laughs> yes. Wonderful. <laughs> my God, it was crazy. It was crazy. No, but and my so husband was in another city. Another city? Oh my God. 
And this, this was like single parent. Single parent. Yeah, that was. That I mean, same. my father came and visited. Mm. My mother-in-law came and visited, but <laughs> stuff. No, so, but uh, Sanjay, one point. My kid yeah. had lead poisoning. Oh, oh, she never slept. <laughs> she used to sleep. I think she was, she was three, almost two and a half before she would sleep two nights of the week, about three hours at oh, a stretch. Oh, wow. it was very difficult. No, but uh, <laughs> one thing which is. uh remarkable i mean so as i learn uh, from this conversation is that uh is that at any point uh, of your time until now whatever we have conversed is that science has never been detached from you no it hasn't i no? have asked myself and there have been two or three times when i wondered if i would continue in the oh. profession mm. one time was <clears throat> which was about uh nearly two years into my post doc um i had a severe health crisis arising from a loss of pregnancy mm. in my 17th week which is mm. not the first you know it was it was a very difficult mm. time and mm. then i wondered you know what was the meaning of life mm. i was doing it etc etc i had a low period then i was mm. unhappy and then i realized that i still enjoy this mm. then the second time the first time i told you i questioned it was when i felt there was no predictability <laughs> and i was like what am i doing <laughs> and this is the second time and the third time when i really questioned it is when i lost my job and i didn't get tenure mm. and then i then i had to th- take a step back mentally and say do i want to continue doing this it's been so stressful in the us yes. no here here yeah. in india mm. and and i was like mm. can i you know it's it's so hard so mm. few people in india manage to change jobs and how am i going to do that is this right for me and then i realized you know i took i didn't speak about it to anybody really for 2 3 months sort of ruminated mm. in my own mind as to what i want to do and then i realized that you know what i still like this and i mm. enjoy this and should i and i want to continue as long as i can let's give it a chance if i get a job and if i can move my lab well and good if i can't okay just come to an end i had a good run while it did yeah. and, and that's good enough and then when i've had difficulties in trying to get my students see the vision of how a study should go i've also questioned myself mm. and that is more recently mm. but these were i would say the three major times when i questioned it was one was the predictability second was mm. ill health and mm. the third was when i lost my job so i was you know I, and every time and i still see that you know and, and now i recognize it for what it is that that will never change because it comes from a place of curiosity curious. i'm curious curious about a lot of things and and so probably that is not going to go away that that probably is a reflection not only from your viewpoint uh, but also for others uh, to realize that uh, a person who is deeply interested in science you cannot stop that person from doing doing things what they want to do yeah right because there is uh, uh, many a times a lot of people especially women uh, come across a particular situation where they may have to think twice of even doing things which men take for granted and uh, this happens so even more when you are let's say doing uh, uh, an academic job unfortunately uh, because the commitment is very different in a, it's not like a, uh, it's not like an industry commitment where uh, Yeah, the where you have to actually really you know slog sometimes. Uh, neither is it uh, totally free because there is also a deep commitment. Let's say to your students, to your community, to yeah, you research, have to get money, money to exactly, pay for it. Pay for it. It's all of those things are there. Yeah. So I I mean, <coughs> I think you know I was saying this to somebody recently that it takes a lot for a woman to be <coughs> genuinely successful and for any human being, a lot of things have to be aligned and luck has to be there. but i think of myself as you know whatever that that i've stayed in the game mm. primarily because i have not let myself be deleted Delete. <laughs> more than that i cannot say and i've loved what i did and i've kept doing what i could do as much as and you know it's not been an easy life my husband and i mm. never solved our two body problem mm. we always raise our children in different mm. you know we I mean, i've raised them he's been elsewhere it still is like that we've done it for decades and and you know that's just the way it is it my is. you know 
very connected to family my mother in law lives with me i don't see too many women faculty members who have that kind of situation so it's quite traditional in some ways and it's all right you know it's it, all right it's, it's all right for me mm-hmm. it was all right and you know i i know there have been compromises that have had to be made by both of us mm-hmm. because of the choices that we have made but it's worked for us and you know take it one step at one a step time, time and and just try to somehow get through the next step and then fine let's do the next step and you know hopefully some people find it you know hopefully some young people find the work that we do interesting hopefully some people enjoy coming and working with a mentor who has you know rigorous yeah but great enthusiasm, enthusiasm for what yeah. they do and if it works great sometimes students see that vision and are excited by it sometimes not my phd supervisor said this he said it's very hard to be friends with your student when they are in your lab yeah when they gain perspective and you gain perspective that's when the relationship is one of one friendship i just had lunch with uh, a former student of mine who's in 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 pune mm. and uh, on sunday mm. and it was wonderful to see her and and you know i feel proud of what yeah. i haven't trained a lot of people but i'm very proud of what everyone is doing mm. actually including my first student who makes hindi youtube videos apparently mm. <laughs> on <laughs> biology is they not team go in karna karna yeah yeah so I, you know as and, long and, as they are contributing to science as long as they are happy happy yeah use your what i always tell them is do good work no matter mm. what you do and use your training well you've well. been trained to think deeply you've been trained to hold yourself to high standards in terms of the work that you produce and mm. what you say mm. it to be taught some communication skills use it well and absolutely then, then build your life the way you want i cannot expect every person you train to have the same kind of love for science or the desire to stay in certain doing certain kind of science i don't expect they expect it, it yeah. but i expect them to come out and do good work whatever they do very well put very well put so uh, given the background you had the training you had uh in branders and also in the medical school you could probably would have stayed back yes i had jobs in the us yes i looked for jobs in usa canada <coughs> singapore and india hmm. india i applied for the fewest places hmm. and i got jobs in usa singapore and india and uh canada i started saying no to hmm. interviews because i was also pregnant with hmm. my second kid hmm. when i was interviewing so with and i had to send my older daughter back to india oh. because my husband would have to have to find daycare for short period of oh. time right mm-hmm. and he was in another mm-hmm. city and it would have been very difficult so she went back to india and i was interviewing so i would what, have what to is, what age she was uh, two and a half or something wow that and, is that is hard huh? and and i had to schedule my gynec appointments i had to schedule my interviews around my gynecology appointments <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you know man okay that's adventure no? yeah. yeah so so and and uh, you know in the us they give you such my first child i had 6 weeks off my second child i had 6 weeks off and then 2 weeks i worked part time and then i was back to full time mm. not very efficient in either case and have impact but anyway that was my life and so you know the thing at that time it seemed very important to me and perhaps in hindsight it was not the right decision i mm. don't know the that we should try to solve our two body problem mm. because i seen the difficulties of raising mm. children on their own how much it yeah. was running around it was and how much it took and uh, we tried to solve the two body problem and i wanted my husband who was already in a tenure track position in the us mm. to feel that you know he also we had to have yeah. mutual respectful yeah, relationship yeah. so he also had to have something mm. which was good and and he got a job in bangalore mm. and i and i also did and he said okay we'll do i said ke chalo karte adventure hoga mm. karte mm. and he would have not left to himself not come back from the us yeah. but i say ha ha kar chalo it's an adventure let's do the adventure mm. so he did the adventure we came back and he came back a few months after i did mm. and then set up lab and he had long commutes and mm. then a year in something happened and he did not get how to say it means uh, he did his probation at the uh, end of his uh, probation, probation period he didn't get regularized okay, okay. so he lost his job 
and you were like abhi kya hoga and he was even more chill than me i've never been as chill as <laughs> so he worked as a as he got a job at short notice in pfr camp and mm-hmm. he essentially was getting paid like a postdoc salary mm-hmm. and after that he went to cmi where he had a faculty mm-hmm. position he had an offer from the beginning in cmi in mm-hmm. faculty position so he went there mm-hmm. finally so again we were ിഫിക്കൽട്ട്ലോർമായി I moved to Mumbai and Mumbai. <laughs> that was that but NCBS was a fabulous place to mm. work i think it was really really fun and it was fun because that was the first time i started doing education mm. Mm. and the reason it was really a lot of fun was my first collaborator mm. was kaustu brau no, who had joined i think a couple yeah, of years yeah. before me he was an engineer yeah. he was yeah. a yif and i had been trying to do this experiment even when i was a postdoc where axonal transfer was discovered <laughs> by this fabulous scientist called paul wines <laughs> when he tied a little knot around the axon and then he would see that either side of the knot things would swell up showing that things were moving much like the what i call yeah. the garden hose problem yeah. where you do a constriction so i was trying to do this in works because my idea was very simple i am able to do some live imaging which i had figured out in in uh, john scoley's <laughs> lab thanks to him allowing me this short visit and i wanted to set it up in my own lab and you knew the steady state distribution that is the bread and butter of geneticists i think ye in between time scale ka data milega to so maybe we'll be able to see this continuum, continuum of what is happening and what's going back and things of that nature and other people had done something like this in other vertebrate neurons which was easier to do an old biologist called anika dolstrom had done some of those experiments very carefully So I wanted to do it in worms. Mm-hmm. And you need to have a fully integrated fully, yeah. system. So in as I got ten O sutures from uh, from an anesthesiologist when I was in Washu and tried to tie it around worms, dental floss, pulled <laughs> by, pulled pipettes, कुछ भी नहीं work हुआ. And then at some point we we realized that people were cutting neurons in worms using a femtosecond razor. So yes. Mike and me said. we'll do that huh? but of course femtosecond laser nahi tha but we had this little dye laser so we got the correct thing we washed it out we tried it kuch nahi cut ho raha i don't know if i cut did not cut i was moaning about this to kaustu he said you want to cut neurons in work i can do it for you what are you worrying about awesome he was in my office almost every day we used to discuss it was so much fun we put two jrfs on it it was a first both of i think both maybe both of our first papers nice, nice. <laughs> we were both co-corresponding authors he was listed last second i was listed second last and we were able to cut all of these neurons and see what cargo accumulated great fun great yeah. fun and then in 2000 six actually i had gone to give a talk <coughs> in iit kanpur mm-hmm. because it was the only other worm lab worm. in the country was there okay. so i had gone to give a talk and meet him mm-hmm. at that time a physicist came uh, who was working on molecular motors heard my talk and said there is this conference oh. with physics in uh, physicists will come you come to it okay. so i said acha main jaati hu kuch kabhi mein nahi aaya again okay. <laughs> you know because it's a different way of thinking yeah. and i was like very eager to sort of understand yeah. that and i saw gautam and he was talking about hopping uh, rates and yes, things like yes, that yes. things which i would understand <laughs> very easily now said, oh this looks like something interesting maybe it can help my biology if i understand something better so in the summer when i was to visit my parents i would go and show gautam data uh, uh, and you know that ended up being the collaboration which you yes, might have seen yes, the yes. article yes. so and and you know he was so generous yes, yes. and all the biophysics experiments that's when i first met roop malik also who was in pfr yeah. mumbai and a lot of the biophysics experiments which were done i did not understand it well you yeah. know so i would call him up on the phone and ask him to explain and he would be very kind and explain he said gautam taught me an enormous yeah. amount kaustub taught me an enormous amount and then i had this collaboration with uh, sauda mini which i would yeah. have never done if i had gone to a purely biology yeah. place right when where she would say that oh you know you can figure out whether this mutant you are looking at has an effect i said can we figure out in some way whether it's going to even affect lipid binding or maybe it's just protein stability so that was very good and of course it was 
fantastic to start working with Yamuna, who is a chemist, who had all these very cool sensors. Same and so I'm not yeah. a very disciplined scientist who will build mansions. Yeah. Whatever catches my interest, I work on. And I was looking at her sensors. The first switch, she had this beautiful animation, which would do this. Yeah. I yeah. switch, it do this and this. And I said, you too, it's cool. Hai. Mm. I said, how can we get it into real cells in neurons? I went and said, you know, you should look at this. Yeah. <laughs> and she also took me on. And that turned that out to be a beautiful really, yeah. collaboration. So I think it, it changed me as a scientist. It was a fabulous place to work. It still is a very, mm. very good place. And it was, you know, despite the fact that I didn't get tenure mm. over there, I have nothing but good things, things to say me. about it, that place. You know, it was a, it was a very good experience uh, for my science, mm. you know, and, and uh, also that's where I did all this stuff with it's the coming. daycare center, the yeah, gym absolutely. and all of that. So, you know, I was doing <laughs> these other things, which maybe I should not have, and I should have worked more. I don't know. I thought I worked pretty hard, but uh, but I think that was all fun. And there were a bunch of good people who came by yeah. the lab. Not very many. I didn't attract a lot of people. I've never attracted a lot of people. But they were there. They were good. They got enthusiastic. And there was one particular postdoc who was who had done a PhD, an IPhD in Venkat's lab in uh, ISC in the physics department. He was working with Kausum. Then he came to my lab developing microfluidic mm -hmm. devices. Through that, we set up a collaboration with uh, Venkat. Mm -hmm. And uh, Venkat, one of, one, of, one of Venkat's future students, then went on to develop microfluidic devices where we measured things like how much pores worms are put in. Yeah, <laughs> They see elegant part of it. I was, yeah, I was yeah, very, very good very nice. fun. Very it was good fun, you know. Very, very so I just, I mean, I think it was, it was good fun, and 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 I, I had a good time. It's a good place, and I think that it really made a difference to my science. It made me more creative. Creative, creative. Uh, there is a very nice article you and uh, Gautam have written. Yes. Two, two to tango. Yeah. Uh, of course, I'm. I that will... was after. I think the two to tango was after the interdisciplinary first M two T two interdisciplinary meeting. So the first M two T two meeting was something that Krishanu, Roop, me, Dulal, Panda, and Devashish Chaudhary mm. from IIT Kanpur, Kanpur set up. It was done in the guest house at TIFR. So of course, me, I like to send my students mm. to conferences. Say, chalo, 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 jate. Yeah. And you know, it was very good because it was like a big open, open lab meeting. So you just discussed for a great time and did all of that. The one that we did with, uh, with I did with Gautam Menon was the third in the series. And we decided to bring in physicists and yeah. other people in it. And again, the idea was that each person got two talks. Okay. They talked one and they could talk. You know, we said plan for 40 minutes, but plan for the discussion going till about even two hours. hours. So it gave you the opportunity oh. to learn. And that's what the second one, which Mahabaleshwar, which mm. Krishanu mm. organized, mm. was also like that. We got opportunities, multiple talks from the same individual and really got the opportunity to learn from them. You can go in depth. I yeah, know. and learn from them. So I learned from all of these things, you know. So I learned... I learned my own field, field better. I also learned new ways of looking at problems. I'm very grateful. I'm not sure this would have necessarily happened if I had taken up my jobs in the US or Singapore. Singapore. So I'm, I think coming back to India brought me more fun in my in science. Mind. There were more difficulties also from purchase to getting yeah. things fixed to make your students that you get you in a lab really are not trained and you have to spend a lot of time training them especially in the writing. But nonetheless, I think this is not something I would something. have ever given up. And at least when I came back to India, maybe you didn't get big grants and it was not a lot of money. My first grant was 19.25 lakhs mm -hmm. or something. But um, what you had was science. At least I have never done very expensive science. I made a very deliberate choice mm -hmm. of C. elegans because I wanted to look at in vivo and wanted to set up live imaging, which I have you know, done and 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 so and it's also not very expensive compared to mouse, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I had that, that little game. practical you want to stay in the game. So that has also helped. Of course in the early years we even reused disposable petri plates <laughs> and things like that. But you know that helped. And yeah, I think right. that sense of wide eyed wonder and enthusiasm has what seen I said it's not you I've already shared some of the difficulties mm. that I had, but you know ups and downs to hona they come you just have to find a way to keep doing stuff and 
every place I have gone, I have learned Learn things, and I'm very, very lucky to have had that. And I think I would say that by find where I am now in DBS, mm. one of the things I have learned, and actually Gaiti told me this a long time ago, Gaiti Hassan, said, who was yeah, in NCBS, yeah. yes, she said yes. that, you know, anything I learned about training students, I learned at DBS. Mm. And I have learned what it means to really train, train people, people well over here. Because me, I trained myself. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was in the air. It was like, in my entire PhD, my, my PI had three scientific conversations with mm. him. And with my own boss, we used to discuss all kinds of things, but not like not my anything, research yeah. or anything like that. So, uh, so I would say that I learned that and that has been very useful. And, and you know, and I've also, I think, become a deeper thinker in just the bi- biology because I'm surrounded now by biologists. And so when I've continued to work on, work with Gautam, we set up a new collaboration, which we are sort of, still wrapping up the second study with uh, Amita Banandi mm. and Debashish Chaudhary, whom you must know, a physicist. Yeah, yeah. I let the student drive the collaboration yeah. because the student had interdisciplinary instincts and it's like, Tum karo. Mm. it'll be good mm. experience for you. And it turned out, I think, a very good experience for them. So I think we've continued to do that, but I will never, I would say that that exposure and that ability to think widely, institutions can be very powerful drivers of change. And it was, I think, that's something which was truly wonderful truly. about NCBS. Wonderful, wonderful. See, there is a, a very famous uh, lines by Iqbal. Uh, means I, I can't uh, anyway eloquently quote him in uh, in Urdu, but uh, the to paraphrase, uh, if you don't find the world to your uh, taste. Create your own world. <laughs> <laughs> something of the, that. I think there was something is like you know you don't expect the world to be smooth. Learn to wear shoes. <laughs> exactly. So in that sense, you know, this is uh, you have actually given a very fantastic uh, picture of how to uh, how to live a life within academia. You know, mm. uh, I, I'm 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 taking a subset. Um, and uh, I, I know there is still this, this story has still a long way to go. But until now, what you painted the picture beautifully is that, you know, sometimes there is a narrowing of the viewpoint of how to live an academic life. Uh, because, uh, you know, you brought up the resilience, you brought up uh, the perseverance. I uh, surely see a lot of curiosity and enthusiasm. And uh, also looking at what comes in front of you and and making it uh, interesting is an equally important thing in academics. See, the, many a times one is blamed, uh, especially people who are working in academics, telling that, oh, what is the immediate application you have? Uh, what is the relevance to the society? You know, my counterpoint in, in my own way is that uh, if you really look deeply, uh, academics actually impact societies even over a long period of time than a very important translation what is happening right now. Because see, for example, the interaction what you have with your student, you're really literally making an important contribution to a upbringing of a particular person. That is non-linear, not measurable. Yeah. These things sometimes we are we are losing out. I'm no way telling that translation research is not important. It is extremely important. But what are your thoughts on that? Because you have led a very interesting uh, academic So I I would say, you know, I'm also a person who's interested Uh, in science communication. And you've seen seen those videos out. And I've had people who who have seen, you know, like students who come for PhD interviews. I say, oh, we've watched your videos Mm. and things Mm. like that. So there's some impact of that happening in the world. I think in a practical term, if you look at patents, for instance, mm. which I am, I'm sure all governments and people who want to do translational stuff think about, fundamental research is cited more in patent yeah, sense applica- application later. And I think, you know, Carico is a great example. Her book is marvelous. Oh, yes, I've yes, got yes, only absolutely. about a fourth of the way through. And what a story, what right? A story. And what, what a but forget about the story, forget about that. She had a finding, right? She and Drew Barrymore had a finding. And could they have predicted that this would lead to a vaccine, Vaccine. a new, New. the first truly new Mm. vaccine Vaccine. platform from the time of Jenner? You know, there has been the, uh, there is the Covishield kind of viral vector thing which has come. And then this is, this is transformative. 
still i'm sure people feel there are things which can be improved but this is the fastest things you can get and deploy and so i sort of think that countries which there are two things you need not just money i think you need consistent support mm. and you need a good educational free framework and culture mm-hmm. and i think in that regard for ideas to come so israel for instance mm-hmm. is a great country where a lot of very good science comes it's very small, small. highest density of uh, scientists mm-hmm. in the world i yeah, gather yeah, yeah. robust funding from the government mm. for a very long, long time, time but also a culture of curiosity, curiosity. questioning and challenge apparently in, uh, i am told i've never worked there mm. i am told by by the people who are, who are in israel that every sentence you say will be challenged by your student, student. or postdoc or vice versa right so that kind of questioning Chilling. and I being think. comfortable with that challenge coupled with taking risks yes. is something which i really wish our culture, culture got comfortable with and didn't have this linear definition mm. of this is a good, good life, life or this is a successful life and the biggest change for our country i feel is cultural followed by give consistent support over 100 years we have not even been independent Indian. that long exactly. on, right give that support <laughs> see what happens you can't have a billion plus people and not have smart people right Absolutely. you can't have a billion plus people who don't have ideas for themselves for society for fundamental problems for yeah, taking day, findings day. and yeah. making it work jugad which is so big yeah, right yeah, exactly. i mean they're getting what was this i just recently yeah. read this article about some of these two a uh, nasa things which have been around for decades and they do all this kind of jugurga to keep those uh, you know devices which are in space sending, sending back, back data yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. and this is i want to say jugurga nasa style <laughs> nasa style jugurga <laughs> nasa style jugurga right and it was a fabulous article i should maybe share that yeah, with yeah, you sure, sure. and we know we have that creativity we need the space to make Uh, make that which should be measured just in terms of nobel laureates yes, and yes. and patents but say invest in it this is something you don't know if nothing else you'll have a cadre of people Absolutely. who are capable of thinking about some things critically and hopefully it will translate to other things because a lot of science is the scientific method, method. it's how you approach, approach problems whether you're going to you know what are your standards of proof is science the only way of knowing the world are there other ways of knowing this world even that mm. is open to scientific Scient- approach, approach right correct. and to you to integrate how far have you gone right and and i think this is why we need that so i don't i think it's a very artificial divide between fundamental research and applied research and i think it's a divide which should go i mean i think you should do what you enjoy the best good things will come from it what people need to do is not buy into a certain way of success right and say only if you do this which 20 other people have done in the west you are successful are tumko jo karna hai karo na dekho kya hota hai absolutely do whatever you do put out good work don't put out shoddy Not work it. things which are well substantiated hmm. done well let's say something new it may not be a big thing new but say something new and make that effort to say something new i don't know i mean i don't have answers i'm sure my view is not a popular view but no, no, that's fact, what that's what i have so it's it's a very important view and i i believe that it is an, it is a very critical view and also a viable view because you know a lot of times uh, you know making a judgment based as you mentioned only on the benchmarks set by let's say uh cultures and environments in which academics is very different many a time see there are a lot of things to learn no doubt yeah. about it Question. you know uh, I, I, all of us have somehow or another been influenced yes. and also thought and learned yes. a lot from the yes. western uh, western uh, kind of uh, culture and also some particular part of the science what they do but uh, very correctly you mentioned that uh, there is you can adapt that that knowledge to to really do things which actually are very important within our environment with our, within our let's say culture and other things but you see why does that happen why is it that for instance <coughs> those countries 
they have invested for a long time if you ask what is the return on investment perhaps it's not great, great there yeah. either but even an occasional return of investment they are willing to accept and say that overall as an enterprise it contributes, contributes. something so yeah. what does it contribute and i think that's a discourse that we need in our society i i have come to think that maybe the singapore model where they have people from all walks of society so, so, yeah. come and be part of decision making they are expected to be in the mm, parliament uh, and do stuff like that is maybe something we should be we, 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 looking we, we, at because we need diversity of viewpoint uh, and for our own nation building for instance so, i think even the current government which is there wants nation building to happen better, right yeah, yeah, and the point is what kind of nation is mm, this the best way mm. to build it okay we hear all the diversity of opinion and we will only choose this okay you may choose only yeah. that but do you have the widest, widest diverse, diversity diversity of opinion that you are hearing which can actually make difference make a make real, a real difference, difference difference to our people it was so sad i read an article in the mm-hmm. economist not that long ago which basically said indian education school education mm-hmm. is in shambles Shamble, that yeah. we have you know about 50% of our people below 30 years of age who essentially don't have any skills, skills. skills. right and it's the tiny sliver of people who come to places like icers mm. maybe and occasionally people who end up mm. in phd programs in icers and tifrs and these tier 1 institute who are among, among the people them. who have gone through this but what about the vast majority well, yeah. who are not getting it Absolutely. and and so and you know this is something which i actually wanted to uh you know risk taking yeah. that it's okay no. to fail to try again try differently and this has to come into our cultural exactly. dna and that is not there and science in my opinion and is the easiest way to teach critical thinking this is the right you're right it's a neutral way mm. to teach crit- critical thinking we are not going to argue about whether the light is bending inside that rectangular white dumb or not light bend ho raha hai humko dikh raha hai right it's very very clear there you are you are seeing it so it's real right and so and learning to think critically in a neutral manner which does not touch upon sensitivities of people, people. is a useful thing to have in our society you know what i think it's most useful for the healthcare decisions you will make mm. it's most useful for the financial decisions you will make you will you will less likely to be taken away with some person saying i am promising you 100% mm. rate of return Returns. you will have something what is 100% rate of return how much will it grow what are they saying where is it going to come from what's that information out there is that information yes. source to be trusted something like this you will have a better life and perhaps along the way you will recognize the values of our preamble yeah, yeah, absolutely and recommit to it because you realize independent of it that these are important values which you can arrive at using scientific, scientific thinking, thinking. thinking saying that it is for the betterment of everybody to have equality justice and fraternity, fraternity and things of that nature right because you can't have disenfranchised people you have to make it I mean, if your countries are not doing well, then some first world country is having immigration problems. People walking across the border. Yeah. Who wants to end up in a country which doesn't want, want you, you. Exactly. right? If you can help it, you would not want, <laughs> want to be to. there. You would want to be and be rooted in your society, having a good life. Absolutely so correct. So all of those things are interrelated, and I think science is a good fulcrum to begin, begin. that, begin that thinking. And uh, and and as I said, neutral way, in simple ways. it's also excellent way to teach logical reasoning in writing which currently in our language education is buying essay books in uh, <laughs> thing and copy paste <laughs> right but instead you can say tumhara experiment kya write the steps in reasoning why you came to this conclusion nice. right and something like that we need and i think it can be hugely mm. transformative in our country now this has to be a collective effort i think things like nep are trying i don't know how well it will be mm. implemented the thing with india is we have great yeah, ideas yes. we have great laws but we are a very yeah. large and complex Expansion. country and a noisy democracy yeah. Yeah. and so it's sometimes very very hard to implement, implement. but you know 
I see the country I grew up in today is very different from the country it was where I, you know, like mm. today what my children are mm. growing up with to what it was in the past. Very different. different yeah. And I am so happy. Happy about it, yeah. India is a richer country. Mm. People have aspirations. Maybe some of the aspirations I don't agree with. Mm. But there isn't the extreme poverty which I saw in yeah, my childhood yeah, yeah. has reduced. India has come a long way. People are hungry for change, are aspirational, middle class, lower middle class, whatever. Even the poorer people can aspire to a slightly better life. life there are yeah. more opportunities than there were in the past. There are problems also which come. But it makes me happy. It yeah. makes me happy to see this change. It just is joyful to Absolutely. do this. In fact, I second the point is uh, particularly on the economics uh, because I have also seen uh, the two sides of the coin, as you mentioned. The fact that our economy became liberal uh, and the free market actually came into picture probably was one of the biggest uh, changes yeah. to, to happen. And uh, how we kind of integrate science into that, that framework is still a question which has to be figured out properly. I think yeah. the first step is we need to get what I always what I always tell my students and myself also. You learn to walk before you run. Yes, precisely right. Work, work basics. Let's get school right. Yeah. Then let's work on college mm. right. Let's invest in teachers. Let's invest <coughs> in respecting that yeah, profession yeah. so that it's not some just some woman who wants some side income who's doing it. But she feels the sense of commitment Come. that we are building the next generation of people. Let's do that. Let's do those things. Other things will follow. Fall, fall if right. you develop and invest in human resources, even though it's very difficult, I think many, many things will follow. Fall. Because it is people who do these things. It is not just money. money. Absolutely right. You're, you're absolutely correct. Because see, that economic and social aspect go hand, hand in hand. Absolutely. And uh, one cannot go forward without the other one yeah. uh, and therefore that is equally important thing yeah. uh, this also brings us to a point uh, where uh, I generally ask my guests uh, to also uh, talk a few uh, kind of sentences in their mother tongue <laughs> where uh, you can express your opinion in terms of what motivated you what is your interest uh, what is the kind of work what you do because this is also an imp equally important part of in being an Indian. Yes. Uh, where uh, none of us, for example, it's it's kind of an irony because we are talking in uh, in English. In, in English uh, although our mother tongues are different. Yes. Uh, and uh, we also have some kind of commonalities in understanding of cultures, but also diversity in, in Indian. Mm -hmm. So what so, is your mother tongue? Kannada. 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 Okay. <laughs> so I, I would say something. I think a person, my le person like me, is a true representation of national integration. Mm. I am an Indian before I'm anything else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My father had a job in the state in which he he doesn't belong in Gujarat. Yeah. So I never learned Tamil in school. Oh, is it? <laughs> right? Yeah. I only spoke yeah. it as at home. My own father did good bits of his education on Andhra Pradesh. And his Telugu. grandfather, <laughs> oh. his grandfather was a school teacher in Bapatla. It's my grandfather went to Tamil Nadu for his job. Yeah. Okay. His grandfather was in, in, Tamil, in Andhra Pradesh, but my grandfather went to Tamil Nadu. My father studied in both states. I think even sometimes my own maternal grandmother, oh. even though she's Tamil, she grew up in Karnataka. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> because my, my maternal grandmother's father was part of the Mysore Maharaja building bridges. Oh, man. <laughs> so... <That's... laughs> You have to ask me, what, what is, is your my mother, mother tongue? tongue? <laughs> yeah. Um, but any, see, any language which you are interested in communicating other than English, that is what I mean to say. So it need not be only. I, I, will, I will try in Tamil, but uh, I have to say that my Tamil, if any real Tamil person hears it, it'll, they'll find it laughable. Na nervous system padikere. Adi Ebdi Vele say Yerde or Chin Jantu, see elegance nor worm la padikere. See already so many English words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, Adinale and the nervous system Ebdi Verish, you know, and the brain Ebdi Verish, you know, conjo understanding Varu, conjo Purion, ne other bakre. 
நான் பண்ற வேலை கொஞ்சம் ரிலேஷன் உண்டு அந்த பார்க்கின்சன் அல்சைமர் எல்லாம் இருக்கு வர்றதுல கொஞ்சம் ரிலேஷன் உண்டு ஆனா நான் பண்றது டிரெக்டா அதுல ரிலேட்டட் கிடையாது I can do better in Hindi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. No, no. You should switch. You should switch. See, that is the versatility. Sandhya, please, please do. Uh, I request you to do that. Yeah. So, we are studying with that, we will not be able to give a patient a direct benefit to that. I will not be able to keep it. But we are doing with that, the people who are interested in those diseases, उनके लिए इंफॉर्मेशन मिलेगा सोचने के लिए वो उस पेशेंट को कैसे दवाई दे सकते हैं क्या दवाई दे कर सकते हैं क्या इंप्रूव करना है और ये हम मैं जो कर रही हूँ मेरे लैब में उस इंफॉर्मेशन के बगैर वो जो अप्लाइड साइंटिस्ट हो और डॉक्टर हो उनके लिए एक डायरेक्शन भी नहीं मिलेगा काम करने के लिए सो बोथ ऑफ दोज आर इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड आई ऑल्सो हैपन टू थिंक इंग्लिश इज एंडियन देन ரொம்ப தமிழ் அவர் ஹிந்தி ஆப்னே பாத் கியா நோ நோ மை சொல்ப சொல்ப கனடா கனடா வி ஃபேபலஸ் கனடா வரது ரொம்ப ஒல்லஸ் சொல்ப 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 சி திஸ் இஸ் एक्चुअली த தட்ஸ் வை சேட் ஐம் எ ட்ரூ ட்ரூ இந்தியன் திஸ் இஸ் ஃபேபலஸ் இந்தியா बिकॉज சி தட் இஸ் ஒன் திங் விச் வி ஷட் பீ வெரி வெரி Uh, very important important very very uh, it's a heartening part of being an it, indian right i think so that in, uh, in fact when i was volunteering with uh, uh, with uh, isrc uh, the indian scientists response to uh, covid 19 uh, or when i was helping set up covid gyan yeah, i was the yeah. content convener there uh, and in in isrc i was working with the you know hoax buster team uh, and i was leading that team i would say that especially when i was working with people like aniket mm. who is in hpcsc they had the resources to reach out to people who will translate That's the uh, material that we were developing in english even in manipuri, manipuri. and things Wonderful. like that so it was very nice so we put out a lot of resources from that and it was i just felt happy about yeah. the whole thing and i realized how important it was so i would sort of sit and train people who were the front face so we would have collins in bengali collins mm-hmm. in in marathi and i would sit there because i was reading really? all the science and summarizing it and say that you know how should you pitch that answer so it, sometimes they would already, already know, know but sometimes it was like one of the cases the telugu was a student of mine mm. and she was working with another scientist in the ifr who may not be keeping track of the literature right so i would say okay so what would you say for this what would you say for that what if you got this question how would you say it so we do this practice runs and you know people would call in call i was in. very surprised that people would call in people were hungry for knowledge and they would call in and we would have questions asked and it was an exercise in how to communicate the uncertainty Indeed. in science to the larger population and not to force anybody to take one path or the other but to say you know this is what the data is so so this might be a good, good thing, thing to though. follow right because at some point people have to make their own choices absolutely correct see i'm i'm also kind of uh, uh, very optimistic of the fact that technology nowadays especially the um, ai based technologies can have major impact in translation of of languages yes uh, in fact that probably is a is a one of the major uh, kind of uh, because you can see even in your, in your whatsapp for example you can uh, type in english and immediately it will uh, it will uh, translate into any language you want oh really yeah 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 it oh. is possible it's mm-hmm. fabulous i've been using it to write in different languages which i can read and write uh, it has really blown away my mind in fact it's it's very uh, very accessible and uh, you, it's quite amazing you know it is truly amazing when yeah. i went to china my student showed me this app on google where you point because yeah i i every country that i travel to i'll visit the grocery store yeah. because i'm curious to yeah. see what they yeah. so you have to point it uh, it's it's remarkable how similar and different yeah. they are both 
I saw mangoes this big. I had oh, never wow. seen mangoes <laughs> this big before. But anyway, you point it and then it will scan yeah, that yeah, and tell you tell what, what it, it is. is. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's right. like, oh, fabulous. Well, there's also an app called Google Lens, uh, yeah. which is also very, very good. In fact, I use it whenever I go to a country. For example, when I went to Japan last year, I used it to translate everything online, you know, oh. and real time. Yes. So, uh, kind of uh, uh, scriptures which you cannot read directly, it does very, very well. Wonderful. It's amazing. So, there is, in that sense, uh, there's a lot of positive aspects of it. Of course, the philosophical aspects, uh, the other kind of consequences are yet to be figured out. But, oh, um, just like starting with email and then Facebook and then look at social media and you're worrying about whether social media is, is you know, one of the reasons why people have such poor mental health. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it started off as let's have a friends group to gone on somewhere else, Absolutely. right? So I think that's that's something you can't help. Help, help. And yeah. uh, this part of getting over connected is an issue. In fact, that is something which probably we haven't figured out. Even I feel that. Uh, it's very important to be connected. It, there is probably a slightly negative of being overconnected because then you know there is no uh, processing time. There is also there is too much of time only on the exchange, and that processing probably is a kind of you know personal time where you have to really think on yourself, etc. Of course, those are all questions which are <laughs> open ended, that. yeah, and uh, a lot of things can be asked. So, so. Uh, Tell me a little bit about uh, your uh, uh, other interest. What do you do? I know that you play Veena. Uh, used, used to. to used, used to. to used yeah. to. I also learned dance and danced a lot till, oh. till I was in college and where I injured my ankle. And after that, science sort science. of gripped me and oh, I started yeah. devoting yeah. all my time there. I think the one thing which has stayed with me my whole life is I'm a reading addict. Addict. Yes, I know, I'm a I reading know, I, addict. Yeah. I, I know you probably also like history quite a bit because yes. I, I've seen some of your posts and also yes, your interests. Yes, I do. I, yeah. I, I read, but I also have Catholic traits. I read yeah. everything. Nice. So, you yes. know, um, so I think I was just wrote some of the science books, which uh, science, I because I sometimes forget uh, names very quickly. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. would, I thought I should write this down. I really enjoyed this book, Brain on Fire, which was mm. given mm. to me by Yishi Jin. Mm someone whom I first met when she interviewed in Brandeis and then I said ended up in UCSD. I had wow. invited her to give a talk in nice. NCBS and fantastic. It's such a, it's about a person who had, you know, basically felt her brain was on fire and there mm. was a channel mutation. I've really, I've enjoyed E.O. Wilson's books uh -huh, and Consilience yes. is Fabulous. I pretty much like Stephen Pinker's Steve writing Pinker's, style yes, yes. very much. I like him, Siddhartha Mukherjee. Siddhartha Mukherjee. But I just, you know, I think I'm rereading Sapiens now. The uh, first uh. time I read it, I it blew me away. Now I'm rereading it. Saying, How is it really concluding that? I know it looks it yeah. looks very appealing, but I really wonder if it is true, true. You know, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I think the second reading, I'm sort of enjoying it. But Stephen Pinker is somebody who's writing I really enjoy. I should mention since you mentioned Pinker. Pinker is one of the most uh, cited uh, authors in my podcast. Oh, I see. I, I, I do. I, I've done also individual podcasts, uh, especially on questions related to rationality. There's a yes. very nice book on, by him. And of course, on Richard writing. Richard Dawkins. The Dawkins. Of Dawkins. Is, yeah. Actually, that was probably... Dawkins was probably the first blind watchmaker. Blind watch the watchmaker. first, first book one, yeah. that I read. I read it when I was doing my BSc in the college. And um, when I was in the MS University, oh. it was there in the library. I think that is probably the first science book I read. And probably the second self one self, second one I read was probably um, Watson's book on the discovery. discovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the science writing came later because where was the book that I was growing up? I mean, you know, my parents were fabulous mm. people. They knew I liked to read. My mom read, reads a lot. Uh, my grandmother reads a, read a lot as well. My maternal grandmother, yeah, she would yeah. even read the envelopes in which fruits and all would come. <laughs> they, those were the days when you didn't have plastic yeah. bags. My parents would, we lived very far from the city. Yeah. So you had yeah, to do books, shopping yeah. in the city. They would leave me in a bookstore called East and West. I would just sit over there and I would read till they finish yes, everything. Yes, yes, and yes, I've yes. read, so that old man was going to the US, he gave me a gift uh. <laughs> of a book. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very very sweet so i've just read all through so mm -hmm. i mean so science books i read but then i also read other stuff so one some of my favorites i really like wilkie collins, collins. moonstone 
fantastic. Mm-hmm. I like Sherlock Holmes. I like mm-hmm. Dorothy Sayers, mm-hmm. uh, Naio Marsh. They're all detective kind mm-hmm. of things. I also like, and I mean, thanks to you know borrowing from various mm-hmm. people, uh, the British Council, the Bronte sisters, mm-hmm. Jane fantastic. Austen, Thomas R. D. E. M. Foster, Virginia Woolf. My parents would set same, aside same, money to buy same, books you know wonderful. for me mark twain emily yeah. dickinson robert ross i really love emily yeah. dickinson's poetry yeah. so sweetest it's... for those who never succeed yeah. comprehend nectar <laughs> requires so is need louisa may alcott o henry my grandmother used to tell me stories my mother you know she used to tell my grandmother used to tell me stories all the way from tanali rama to anne of green gables to neville shoot Wow. <laughs> okay. <That's amazing. laughs> and she used to tell me stories in Tamil. Okay. Nice. And uh, I didn't even know Anne of Green Gables was a thing till my children had grown up to eight or nine years old and I got a set of those books second hand. Because um, she had watched it as a serial when she had visited my uncle in the US and then she liked it very much and she translated it to it. My mother read me Kalki stories. It used yeah. to come as yeah. serials. Yeah. 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 And so she would buy the magazine I come back from college or school, I don't remember, and she'd read everything, including the poetry. Wow. So, Pony yeah. and Selvan. Pony she's and read Selvan. it to me. She, she's a very bright woman. She yeah. She's doing at the age of 79, she's submitting her thesis this year. Wow, week. is it? Fantastic. Fantastic. Wow. In Sanskrit. In Sanskrit? Mm. She, be, she did her MA in Sanskrit and MPhil and all in her 60s. Amazing. Amazing. We, we should actually name her. Please tell her name. Please tell her. Geeta Padmanabhan. Geeta Padmanabhan. <laughs> she yeah. is in Mumbai or she is she's in, in Chennai. 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 Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing, oh, woman. Amazing. amazing woman. Amazing woman. So um, she had read it as a, when it first came out and I think she was under six when she read it, when Pony and Selman came out. So she read it to me and she read it to my children also. Wow. Except she simplified it for them. But for me, she it was only one at a time. Then she was read Chela Padigaram. So a lot of those, so Tamil came into my life that way. Right. And my reading of Tamil came because Pata Pustam. She mm-hmm. would teach me music. She, well, as well uh, as her sister, mm-hmm. my aunt still sings. They even sang, they sang in music academy and all of that. But she got married when she was mm-hmm. 17. My aunt got married slightly later. Different families, she still sings. Um, so Tamil, Pata Pustam were all written in uh, Tamil. There was no mm-hmm. music books written in English. That's a recent phenomenon. So you learn to read Very Tamil. Tamil. To okay. <laughs> sing. That's actually a great way of learning both the language and the Yeah, literature. yeah. So those are things and I enjoy art a great deal. Um, science art, especially some of the person Beta mm-hmm. um, does beautiful science illustration in India. It's a Jane. I really like it's her work. I have her book. And uh, and when I went to the US, you know, going to art galleries, museum walks, all of that are things which I deeply Deep enjoy. Enough. And even here in Mumbai, that's the nice part of being in Mumbai. Once a month, all the galleries will mm, open, open up, up and then yeah. you can just go and watch. And I go to the museum. So those are just things. These are various, various things. But I would say that I read about art. I read about music. and It's just part of life. I love... My musical tastes have changed. It was initially all classical. And mm. then now I listen to jazz. I listen to popular music. So it's really what catches. It's actually specific performances of specific people. Mm. So like the Alicia Keys sang Falling, which mm. is one of her songs, in the Apple Music Festival. And I like that particular performance over all of the all others. Of the... Then there was, I don't know if it was Jay-Z and she sang um, Empire State which is a very popular song New York, New York and there was a particular performance mm. of that that I like so I sort of do that I like listening to Tamil rap you know, just Fantastic. Just, just curious, curious about the world and that sort of translates into everything And but as I think I really like NPR Tiny Desk yeah, that's also fabulous yeah, kind of and I and there's this Israel group that there was a physiologically irrelevant mm. conference organized by Ode and Rekkevi and I went to it I said ah. this sounds interesting <laughs> <laughs> and I just went and uh, I went and there he had got this band called Abwa A dash W A and that A W A is a neuron in C elegance <laughs> Wow. They're very good. They have a very nice tiny desk uh, yeah. concert. So I was dancing over there, but I also mm-hmm. discovered them. So I looked for them. So very many different many things. Different. 
many different things but i think all related to reading and reading, exploration, exploration of the world and yeah an intellectual life uh, has ha- has kind of many interests so to speak so this is yeah. actually very natural to have that thing. yeah but yeah. i wouldn't say like you know there are some people who have take a deep dive in yeah, one thing one and thing. know a great deal about one thing so I, there was one time in my life i was i have bunch of history books and mm-hmm. i used to read just world oh, history and i felt i never had a liberal arts education i should educate myself yeah. i find all this interesting so there was a period of time when i was doing that so it really depends on what floats my boat what catches my mind and there's just so much now the whole world has opened up and in through the internet that you know sometimes if you find a good source you can go and right. learn but still i would say my primary thing is not watching something is reading, reading something reading. Yeah. I also in terms of music I also really like uh, film scores mm-hmm. good bad and ugly godfather <laughs> I mean just iconic <laughs> things yeah, yeah. so yeah. I I like those kinds of things and which is not really, it doesn't seem very common unfortunately no, but that's what I like yeah the taste are taste that's how yeah, it should that's be that's so fabulous So yeah this has been It's been fabulous. too long I no, think No no not at all no no this has been a fabulous conversation in fact I have enjoyed learned a lot and uh, i hope also to you know have a longer conversation in future at some point of time uh, that is the whole motivation behind pratidwani because of course this is kind of a biographical uh, a conversation uh, related to science yeah. but uh, hopefully this is also will lay a foundation as uh, oral history uh, yeah. at some point of time where we can elaborate a little bit more and i thank you very much for your time Uh, Thank you. I don't think I've ever shared so much of my life with anybody except my family. No, the, the, there are a lot of uh, things which one can learn from uh, from from anybody's life. Yes. And uh, uh, and I'm I'm very thankful for you to to share that uh, with us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. This is Pratidwani where we try to humanize science this time with the one and only Sandhya Kaushika. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. <laughs>